Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Hello, everyone. Along with Ralph Kiner, this is Jim Simpson speaking from Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. In a few minutes, we'll bring you the first game of the 1969 World Series between those amazing New York Mets, champions of the National League, and the veteran Baltimore Orioles who won the series in this ballpark just three years ago, completing a four-game sweep over the Los Angeles Dodgers. Today's first game is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation, engineering with care. Your host for today, your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. The Hartford Insurance Group and Hartford agents and brokers everywhere. Right guard, America's number one deodorant. And right guard, Andy Persburn in the silver can. The makers of Winston, Salem and Camel cigarettes. And by Phillips 66, where it's performance that counts. In Baltimore this morning... It dawned a gray and overcast day, but let me tell you, at the moment, the sun is out. The temperature is 71. It's expected to reach about 75 today by the middle of the game. The New York Mets, who have taken the Atlanta Braves three in a row, they won 100 ball games against Baltimore, as we said, in the 1966 World Series, and they won that in four straight over the Dodgers. And Paul Blair, Frank Robinson, Boog Powell, Brooks Robinson, Davey Johnson were all members of that crew and are all in the starting lineup today. We'll give you the Mets starting lineup in detail a little bit later on. But Tommy Agee will lead it off and play center field. Bud Harrelson, the switch hitter at shortstop. Cleon Jones, a 3 4 hitter out in left field. Don Clendenin at first base as Gil Hodges goes with his right-handed lineup. Ron Svoboda, Baltimore born and bred, is in right field. Ed Charles, the veteran at third base. Jerry Grody behind the plate. Al Weiss at second base and Tom Seaver. The winningest pitcher in the major leagues, 25-7. and seven, The Mets pitching choice and an obvious one today. For the Baltimore Orioles, switch hitter Don Buford leads it off and plays in left field. Paul Blair is in center. Frank Robinson, the team leader, is in right field. Big Boog Powell is at first base batting cleanup. Brooks Robinson is at third base. Ellie Hendricks, the catcher. Dave Johnson at second. Mark Belanger at short. And Mike Cuellar, the winningest left-hander in all of baseball this year with 23-11. and 11 is the Baltimore starting choice. Well, we want to welcome to the NBC broadcast booth a great star of the National League, and since the inception of the New York Mets, one of their broadcasts is Ralph Kiner. And Ralph, they called them the Amazing Mets. They've been amazing for a good many years, but this year, with 100 victories in the regular season and three straight over Atlanta, they are truly amazing. There's no doubt about that, Jim. This ball club in their first year won only 40 ball games, lost 120 ball games, and this year they have won 100 and they lost 62. And the big amazing story was on August 13th, the Mets with a record of 62 and 51, then went on in their next 49 ball games to win 38 and lose only 11 and to defeat the Chicago Cubs in a real strong pennant drive. Probably the big leader in the ball club is Tom Seaver, the starting pitcher of this ball club in this game. Tom, from the beginning, said in spring training that he thought the Mets could win it. Not too many of the Mets thought they could win, they were pointing more for third place. In fact, Gil Hodges, the manager of the Mets, thought that if they won 85 ball games, they would be having a great year. Of course, they went way above that and won the overall National League pennant and the championship games with Atlanta winning three straight from Atlanta. Seaver, along with Jerry Kuzman, leads a very strong pitching staff. The Mets plan to use Kuzman in the second ball game, and the Orioles are going to use Dave McGalley in their second game choice. Mets them back up these two leaders with strong secondary pitching. Nolan Ryan, who might be the hardest thrower in baseball today, and Tug McGraw, a young left-hander who picked up a screwball and added about a yard to his fastball and who had a great year in the bullpen for the Mets. So you can look for good pitching if you can look for anything in a short series. 
And also, you can look for fine defense from the New York Mets. They have a much better hitting ball club than you might believe. They have Cleon Jones, who led the club in hitting with a 340 average. Backing him up, a very good ball player in center field in Tommy Agee. Tommy got many of the clutch hits throughout the season. The Mets use the platoon system, so they have players at different positions playing. In this game today, with a left-hander going, Ron Svoboda is going in right field. A strong, very hard-type athlete. Normally, Art Shamsky, who had a great year batting 300, played the ball games in right field against right-hand pitching. So, Jim, it looks like we got a pretty good start for a David and Goliath series here. It's the Mets, the young ball club, and no one knowing not too much about whether they can go all the way. And the Baltimore Orioles, a very strong ball club, maybe one of the strongest representatives the American League has had in quite some time. Well, Ralph, I'm sure that most people know the defensive superlatives that I could say about the Baltimore Orioles, starting with Brooks Robinson at third base. Many say that perhaps Brooks is the greatest third baseman of all time. Frank Robinson, of course, is the team leader out in right field. But in that infield, when you've got Brooks Robinson at third base, and Mark Belanger could be the best shortstop in all of baseball, although Met fans will argue that, at shortstop, and Davey Johnson down at second, and Boog Powell, although big, does not move that slowly around at first base. And, of course, in the outfield with Buford, Blair, a premier center fielder, and the obvious Frank Robinson, that is quite some defensive lineup of the Orioles. And, by the way, in home runs, and in hitting, in every department of offense, Baltimore by far and away surpassed the New York Mets. And perhaps that's the reason why Baltimore is favored to beat the New York Mets. But a question to you, Ralph Connor. Gil Hodges has been most effective in platooning today because the left-hander Cuellar is starting for Baltimore against Tom Seaver of New York. He has come back with Ron Svoboda, born and raised here in Baltimore, Don Clendenin, and Ed Charles, all right-handers. More importantly, Ralph, perhaps, is the fact that they haven't played in about two weeks. That's very true. The Mets faced right-hand pitching down the line in their stretch drive just about all the way, with the exception of Steve Carlton, the fellow they beat to win their division of the National League. Incidentally, Carlton, in one ball game this year, struck out 19 Mets for an all-time record for a pitcher in a nine-inning ball game. The Mets won that ball game by a score of four to three. The Mets against left-handers, a tough club. But also the thing that might change this ball game around is that Mike Cuellar throws a screwball. It's its bread and butter pitch, and a screwball is very effective, of course, just the opposite of the curve. And it could be a change in this ball game. There was some speculation as to whether or not Gil Hodges would use left-hand batters against the screwball, but he has decided to go with his regular platoon team. And now for the New York Mets. Here once again is the lineup. Leading off and playing center field, Tommy Agee, a 271 hitter, 76 RBIs on the year. Batting second at shortstop, the switch hitter, Bud Harrelson. Batting third, a 340 hitter on the year, Cleon Jones, playing left field. Batting cleanup, and he hasn't played in a couple of weeks, the former pirate, Don Clendenin, playing first base. 51 RBIs, 16 home runs this year, a 248 average. In right field, Von Swoboda hitting a 235. At third base, Ed Charles. Batting seventh and doing the catching, a fine defensive catcher, Jerry Brody. Al Weiss, WEIS, will be at second base. And Tom Seaver, 25 and 7 on the year, who completed the season with a 10 game winning streak, will start for New York. For Baltimore, leading off and playing left field, Don Buford. Batting second in center field, Paul Blair. Frank Robinson will be in right. Batting third, Boo Powell will be at first and bat fourth. And we'll complete this lineup for you in just a moment. But now, the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra and Mr. Joseph Eubanks will play and sing our national anthem.
completing that Baltimore lineup. Brooks Robinson will bat fifth and play third base. Ellie Hendricks is your catcher, batting sixth. Dave Johnson batting seventh at second base. Mark Belanger, the shortstop, and Mike Cuiar, the winningest left-hander in baseball this year, with 23 victories, will be on the mound in just a moment. And we'll continue with our pregame color right after this message. If you want a car that makes it, Plymouth makes it. If you know what's happening and want to be there, Plymouth makes the CUDA. If you swing with a crowd that moves fast and thinks young, Plymouth makes duster. If you want luxury inside and out, Plymouth makes the Sport Fury Brom. If you want a car that goes beep beep, Plymouth makes the Roadrunner. If you dig new sounds, Plymouth makes it. If you like wild new colors and mod tops, Plymouth makes the Mod Top Barracuda. If you want a car that makes it, Plymouth makes it. And we pause now 10 seconds for station identification. This 1969 World Series game is brought to you in part by Saratoga Vichy and Saratoga Ginger Ale. Sit back and relax with the Fizz Kids from Saratoga. WGY Schenectady. Jim Simpson back in Baltimore and Ralph Connor were moments away from the first game of the 1969 World Series. That's right, Jim. And right now, the photographers gathered around Mrs. Joan Payson, the owner of the New York Mets, as she takes her position down near the oil dugout. It's a beautiful day, as we have told you, for this first game of... A very interesting World Series. And now, David Eisenhower, grandson of the late president, throwing out the first ball from the commissioner's box on the left field side. And we'll make a correction on that. David Eisenhower was scheduled, but it is Bowie Kuhn, the commissioner of baseball, who did throw out the first ball. This game is called the commissioner's game. He makes all the decisions. They have suspended the 20-second rule with men on, not on base. You do not have to throw the ball within 20 seconds. The managers can go out to the mound or their coaches as many times as they want to. That rule also suspended. And now the Baltimore Orioles are taking the field. Baltimore Orioles, who had a record of 109 wins and 53 losses for their overall season's record. Against the New York Mets, they won 100 ball games and lost 62. Orioles in 1968 finished second, 12 games out of first place. The Mets in 1968 finished ninth, one game out of last, and 24 games out of first place. Umpires Hank Soar behind home plate. At first base, Frank Sicori. At second base, Larry Knapp. At third base, Shag Crawford. Lee DeMuro down the left field line. And Lee Wire down the right field line. Mike Cuellar taking his warm-up pitches. He won more games than any left-hander in the American League with 23 wins, 11 losses. He's 32 years of age. He appeared in 39 ball games, worked 291 innings, had a number on average of 2.38. And he has just completed his warm-up pitches. The throw goes down the second base. It gets away from the second baseman and goes out in the center field. And with that, we'll watch the amazing New York Mets against the Baltimore Orioles. And here for the play-by-play, Jim Simpson. Thank you, Ralph Kahn. I'm sure we're in for a remarkable and very exciting series. Tommy A.G., a team leader, hitting 271, 26 home runs, 76 RBI, steps in to face Mike Cuellar. A.G., a right-handed batter. Cuellar, a left-handed pitcher. Powell is at first base. Davey Johnson at second. Mark Belanger at short. Brooks Robinson at third. We are ready for his first pitch on this sunny day. And it catches the outside corner strike one. Buford is in left. Blair in center. Robinson in right. Ellie Hendricks is catching Cuellar. The screwball to a right-handed batter will move down and away from him. And Cuellar is a screwball pitcher. Foul back to the screen. And it's strike two. The Mets... Have nine right-handed hitters in the lineup, but you just can't get any more than that.
We are ready again. The pitch to Ag, Just off the corner this time, and it's one and two. The Baltimore outfield is playing Ag differently than the National League did. They play him as a pull hitter, and the center fielder, Paul Blair, is very shallow. Ag has very good power to center field and right center. One-two delivery, and it's off the corner again, 2-2. Ag, of course, a couple of years ago, was in the American League, rookie of the year with the Chicago White Sox. And Cuellar, last year, was in the National League and was 0-2 against the Mets. But in 1967, he was 4-1 against them, 5-5 five five lifetime. So these folks have met before. Off the corner again. And A.G. has worked the count to the full 3-2. and two. A.G., of course, one of the speedsters on the bases. He has stolen 12 this year. And when the Mets talk about a team leader, they talk about A.G. because Tommy gets on base, steals bases, and can score. Foul at the plate. Hendricks keeps the ball in play, throwing it back to Cuellar. Our scorer is the president of the Baseball Writers Association of America, Dick Young of the New York Daily News. And then from Baltimore, Lou Hatter, the Baltimore Sun, and representing New York, Joe Durso of the New York Times. 3-2 pitch, ground ball, Brooks Robinson at third base. Has plenty of time to throw it eight feet as one away. And that'll bring up the switch hitter, Bud Harrelson, hitting at 248. Bud was two for 11 in the Atlanta playoff series. Switch hitter, bats right, of course, against the left hand Cuellar. One of the finest shortstops around, and according to Phil Necro, the Atlanta Braves, the man who troubles him perhaps the most in the entire Mets lineup. Inside, and it's ball one. Harrelson, not a power hitter, will go with the pitch, and that undoubtedly it was what bothers the knuckleballer, Necro. One out, no score. We're in the top of the first. Harrelson, the batter. Cuellar is ready inside again, and it's 2-0. and Cuellar got two quick strikes on A.G. and then went to 3-2 and two before the ground ball to Robinson. He's now 2-0 and oh to Harrelson. Back with the pitch. Pulled foul down the line. Which was high and in on him, and Harrelson did pull it foul. Eddie Yost is the coach at third base, and Yogi Berra, who holds the record for the most World Series performances, is over at first. Two on pitch from Cuellar, and it's fouled again, out of play, off to our right. Gil Hodge's family, of course, is here, and the New York Mets manager has a daughter by the name of Barbara, who is eight years old today. What an exciting day this must be for her. Her dad's got the Mets in the series, and she's got her eighth birthday. 2-2 the count to Harrelson. Ground ball. Robinson takes it on one hop, and again has plenty of time to throw him out. Not as sharply hit as A.G.'s grounder, and that brings up Cleon Jones, a 340 hitter, 12 home runs, 75 RBIs. And is the book right, Ralph, when you say that Jones can pull for power, but... More than A.G., will try to go with the pitch and hit to all fields. Cleon definitely goes with the pitch. He has good power straight away. He is a line drive hitter. And I would imagine against Cuellar screwball, he'll just about have to go with it because they're not going to give him anything inside to pull down that short left field line at 309. After a hazy start, a near cloudless day here in Baltimore. The sun is shining, the temperature in the low 70s, two out on the top of the first, and Jones was taking all the way. And it's strike one. The amazing Mets and the veteran Baltimore Orioles who took the Dodgers four straight here three years ago. Cuellar's back high and away this time, and it's one and one. Jim, I know that uh, Paul Blair in center field used to belong to the New York Mets. He was drafted out of their organization, but he is playing the shallowest center field that I have seen against the Mets this year. One and one the count. Blair has that amazing ability to go deep. There's a swing and a miss by Jones. It's one and two. When you talk about defense, as we said, with Robinson and Belanger and Johnson and Powell in the infield, but when you look up the middle and see Blair standing out there in center, that is really defensive strength up the middle. One to the count to Cleon Jones. Ground ball. Belanger over. Can't get to it. Gets into center field. The first base hit of the 1969 series. And the Mets have a base runner with Don Clendenin coming up. 
Clendenin, you know the story, wanted to retire. They coaxed him out of retirement. Finally, Montreal traded him on to New York, where he wound up hitting 248, 16 home runs, 51 RBIs. And Clendenin is one of the keys to this series, as is Ron Swoboda. They must hit. Gil Hodges is going with the right-handed lineup against the left-hander Cuellar. They haven't played in about two weeks. Inside room with a breaking pitch. It's ball one. When the Mets won the Eastern Division of the National League, it was Don Clendenin on September 24th who hit a three-run home run in the first inning. They got the Mets out in front. They won that game from the Cardinals 6-0. Cuellar checks over at first base where Jones is only a couple steps off the bat. One and all to Don Clendenin, former Pirate, for a brief while in Expo, and now a New York Met and in the World Series. Bayar comes back with the pitch, swing and a miss. It's one and one. We're just in the top of the first. They're two out. Jones at first and no score. Win now, blowing toward left. And Clendenin, of course, a right-handed batter, as all the Mets are today. Two and one. Pitch is outside and away by Cuellar. Ralph and I will be checking with you throughout the early moments to see how the screwball of Cuellar's is reacting, as well as the fastball and slider of Tom Seaver. Two and one pitch, and that's 2-2 as Clendenin swings and misses. Baltimore, a confident ball club, confident in that it has had success in the American League and in the World Series. And the Mets, well, as their manager Gil Hodges says, an amazingly resilient team. Another check to first base, and Jones again was just a step or so away. They have youth, but they'll bounce back. 2-2 pitch to Clendenin, fouled upstairs, and it's still 2-2. There's a huge flag replica of the flag that flew over Fort McHenry and Francis Scott Key right here in the Baltimore area wrote our national anthem that is flying past the center field wall. 2-2, Cuellar throws, fouled at the plate, rolls back and hits the screen. Hendricks picks it up. Don Buford described by Mickey Mantle as one of the coming stars of the American League, although he has been around for some time in the White Sox organization, playing a very deep left field against Cleon Jones. Beg your pardon, Don Clendenin. As Jones leads off first base, Clendenin swings and misses and strikes out, and Mike Cuellar, the oil out of it. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. In the middle of the first, it is New York nothing with Baltimore coming to bat. Some men have average size hands. Some men have big hands. For men with average hands, Gillette introduces our new adjustable razor with an average size handle. For men with big hands, Gillette introduces our new adjustable razor with a long handle. Both new razors have nine precision settings. Gillette figures a more comfortable razor in your hand means a more comfortable shave. Every time you take your car on the road, your tires are taking a survival test. And if they flunk out, man, you're in trouble. So you've got to make sure your tires are tough. As tough as Phillips 66 tires. They're made with the toughest tire rubber known to man. That's the only way we know how to make tires. Phillips 66 tires are so tough, so strong, they'll pass the tire manufacturer's toughest test. Isn't that the kind of tire you'd like to depend on? Phillips 66 tires from your nearby Phillips 66 station. This is Ralph Geiner along with Jim Simpson. We're in the first game of this 1969 series, Memorial Stadium, Baltimore, in the first half inning of the ball game. Tommy Agee grounded out to third against Mike Cuellar, also Bud Harrelson the same, Leon Jones in single to center field, but Don Clendon and went down swinging at a 2-2 pitch. Now the Baltimore Orioles coming up, and once again for the play-by-play, Jim Simpson. Don Buford will lead it off, followed by Paul Blair and Frank Robinson. And for the Mets defensively, Don Clendenin is at first base. Al Weiss is at second. Bud Harrelson is the shortstop. 
Ed Charles, 36 years old, and in the World Series, is over at third base. Leon Jones is out in left, Tommy Agee in center, Ron Swoboda in right, and just moments ago, the three outfielders convened and conversed in dead center field and then took their respective positions. Jerry Grody is the catcher, and 25-game winner Tom Seaver is the pitcher. A.G. in center, Ed Charles at third, and Al Weiss at second. Of course, all played at one time or another in the American League. Here's Buford, the switch hitter. Stolen 19 bases and hit a credible 291, 11 home runs and 64 RBIs, despite the fact he's been leading off most of the year. No score, we're in the last of the first. Buford batting left-handed against the right-handed Tom Seaver, who is inside with the first pitch, ball one. Jim, I had Don Buford at San Diego when I was the general manager of the ball club there back in 1916. It was interesting to talk to him and see how far he's gone since then. Drive to left field. Swoboda started in, then back, looking up near the wall. And cannot get it. Home run Buford as Swoboda falls down. tarpaulin fence of seven feet, about 370 feet away. Svoboda started in, went back, crashed against the canvas, and fell down. Baltimore leads one to nothing. Paul Blair the batter, and it's strike one call. The Mets are down one to nothing. With the second batter up for the Orioles, swing and a miss by Blair, and I would say, Ralph, that Don Buford's come quite a ways in San Diego. That's a long way right there. That's a big home run hit there that got the Orioles off to a fast start. Seaver gave up 24 home runs in the regular season. Foul to the screen by Blair. Still, still two strikes. Blair, of course, hit a home run in 1966. And in that game against the Dodgers, it was the only run of the ball game. He won it for him. Seaver back with the next pitch. Breaking pitch, and it's fouled upstairs. Behind home plate. And it's two strikes to Blair. Paul fairly jumped into that batter's box after he saw what Buford had done. Kneeling on deck is Frank Robinson. The Orioles are the favorites, and at the moment, they enjoy a slim 1-0 lead. Seaver ready and throws outside. And Ralph, I'll ask you, having seen Seaver all year, to take a reading for us somewhere along the bottom of this first inning to see how Tom is throwing. In the dirt, it's 2-2. The two times that I saw Seaver this year in Montreal and in Atlanta, each time he was a little wild high and seemed to be pressing. 2-2, the count. Throw, swing, and a miss. Blair strikes out. That pitch right there, a hard fastball in a perfect spot, letter high over the inside corner, and Seaver had plenty on it. He's going to have to have good stuff against this hard-hitting ball club, and now one of the great ball players of all time, Frank Robinson, coming up. Robinson at 308 this year, 32 home runs, 100 RBIs. He was 4 for 12 in the series against Minnesota and hit a home run in that one. Seaver's first pitch is fouled at the plate, strike one. Buford who has Homer to put Baltimore in front one to nothing here in the last of the first inning. Hit only three home runs here in Baltimore all during the season. The other eight came on the road. Saber with a strike one count on Robinson is ready and throws hard and it's fouled back toward us and it's two strikes. Buford picked on a 1-0 pitch. The second pitch of the game thrown by Seaver was the home run that has Baltimore in front. On deck is Big Boog Powell. Everybody remembers that in the playoff, the first game against the Twins, trailing by a run in the last of the ninth, Boog came up and hit a home run to tie the game, and the Orioles wanted the next inning. Seaver's back, and this one is in the dirt, away from the plate, gets by Grody and back to the screen. And it's one and two to Frank Robinson. Billy Hunter is the coach at third base. 
You just watched Buford circle the bases and George Staller over at first. Seaver's ready again, and Robinson hits a curveball. That bounds foul, and Billy Hunter, a fine glove man during his regular career, makes a barehanded pickup. Still one and two to Frank Robinson. Robinson, according to everybody in both leagues, is made of the stuff it takes to make a great manager in the major league someday. Swings at a high pitch and strikes out. So after giving up the home run to Buford to lead off the last of the first, Seaver has struck out Blair and Robinson. These are not boos. This is for Boog Powell. Sort of reminds you of the days of Moose Gower and when he'd come to the plate and they'd go for the moose bit and you always thought if you didn't know that he was being booed. Powell had a great year. 304, 37 home runs and 121 RBIs and takes a big cut, strike one. And in the series against Minnesota was 5 for 13. Tom Seaver, who will be 25 on the 17th of November, is ready and throws an off-speed pitch, which is down low, and it's one and one to Big Boo Powell. The Mets, remember, not only came from nine and a half games down, but were behind in their third and final game to Atlanta and kept coming back. Powell swings and misses. It goes off the chest protector of Brody, and it's one and two. Commissioner Bowie Kuhn throughout the first ball. The president was expected to be here until late yesterday afternoon. He did not make it. The one-two pitch is way outside. Brody has it. It's 2-2. And among the many managers that we have seen around, including Harry Walker of Houston, Ted Williams is here, who did a tremendous job with the Washington Senators in his first year as a manager, finishing 10 games over the 500 mark. For the first time, the Senators have done that since the early 50s. 2-2, and Powell pulls a single in the right field. Line shot, and Boog will hold there as Pavota is over to field the ball. That's the second hit. And here is Brooks Robinson, a 234 hitter on the year, but 23 home runs during the regular season, 84 RBIs, and against... The Twins, 7 for 14. He batted 500. Robinson. Robinson, many time Golden Glove winner, many time All Star. He's a real youngster when it comes to the World Series. He gets eager. Drives the center field. AD starts back near the warning track, about 400 feet away, and hauls it in for the third out. And Seaver had some rough moments. One run on Buford's homer, two hits, no errors, and one left. And at the end of one, the score is Baltimore 1 and New York nothing. It's do Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle. One, two. And riding on a pony. Stuck a feather in it and called it macaroni. What did he call it? Macaroni. <laughs> After a child has been in a bad accident, how can an insurance company help him to laugh again? The Hartford knows that money alone can't do it, but people can. Doctors, specialists, therapists when they're needed to treat the injuries, to soothe the shock. And getting them there fast can also help. At the Hartford, we know it's often the kind of help you bring in at the start that determines whether or not there'll be a happy ending. Insurance by the Hartford. We try to keep things simple. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. WGY Schenectady. Saratoga ginger ale is not Saratoga Vichy with ginger flavor added. We're not sure where that rumor got started, though we have our ideas. In any event, what Saratoga ginger ale is, is a quite unusual, delicious drink with its own identity altogether. It's gingery without being snappish, mellow without being gooey, altogether luscious. But then the Saratoga people do everything in good taste. We're going now to the top of the second inning. The score one nothing in favor of the Orioles, and as Ron Swoboda steps in, here's Jim Simpson. 
Swoboda. All right, Ralph, on Swoboda, if you hear a cheer, I'm sure that many of his relatives are here, perhaps half the ballpark. Ron was born in Baltimore, grew up here, went to the University of Maryland. Now, here he is back. The face quay are, tips of bunt, strike one. And I never think of Ron as being too much of a bunting threat. Am I wrong, Ralph? Ron will fake a bunt once in a while and will lay one down pretty well. Of course, the Mets training by one. They'd like to see that big bat going at full speed at that ball. Now tipped at strike two to Swoboda. Ron, nine home runs during the regular season does have power. 52 RBIs being platooned with Art Chamsky out in right field. Ron, 25 years old. Cuellar is back, and he strikes out on three pitches. That's the second strikeout for Cuellar, who got the first to an order in the first, gave up a single to center to Cleon Jones before Clendenin struck out to end the inning. One to nothing Baltimore here in the top of the second on Don Buford's leadoff home run in the last of the first. Here is Ed Charles, who has not played, like Swoboda and Clendenin, for a couple of weeks. 36-year-old veteran hit it in 207 and takes strike one. Three home runs during the season, 18 RBIs, and used rather sparingly. One run, two hits, no errors for the Orioles. No runs, one hit, no errors for the Mets. And Mike Cuellar on the mound facing Tom Seaver of the Mets. Charles fouls this one off the fists. Charles is called the grand old man of the Mets, and they call him the glider for the way he runs. And the saying is, don't throw a slider to the glider. Two strikes, and let's see what Cuellar comes back with. The screwball pitcher comes in and close, and some of the fans behind home plate thought that it was a strike, but it's one and two now to Ed Charles. Jerry Grody's on deck. The amazing Mets trailing by a run. We are taking a long time to get a sign from Ellie Hendricks. Now ready and throws, and it's inside and low, and it's 2 2. Cuellar throws that screwball down and away from the right-handed batter and likes to come in with that fastball inside. 2-2 pitch, and there's an inside fastball, and he struck him out his third in a row. And so those who have not played for a couple of weeks, Don Clendenin, Ron Svoboda, and Ed Charles have all struck out. Jerry. Here is Jerry Grody getting a 252, fine defensive catcher, two for 12 in the series against Atlanta. Has some power, hit six home runs, and drove in 40. They are is bending over, waiting for Grody to step in, but Mike is ready to throw. As the sign, Grody is in, and the first pitch is outside ball one. We're in the top of the second, one to nothing, the Orioles on Buford's home run. They are back with the pitch. Changed on this one. Slides over the plate for strike one. One and one to Grody. Cuellar had a rough start with the Orioles, but he finished in a hurry, winning 23. Ground ball, chance for Belanger, his first, and the shortstop throws him out by 10 to 12 feet. And the Mets go down one, two, three. And in the middle of the second, Baltimore leads one to nothing. with Jim Simpson from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. The Orioles lead 1-0 in the home run by Don Buford. Once again, here's Jim. 
All right, Ralph. Ellie Hendricks will lead it off, followed by Dave Johnson and Mark Belanger. And in the booth with me, and he's been in the booth with me all year long for NBC, Sandy Koufax. And in a moment, we're going to ask Sandy about Tom Seaver and also about Mike Cuellar. And now, here's Ellie Hendricks. 244 on the year. Has a lot of power when he gets the bat on the ball. Hit 12 home runs, 38 RBIs, and he is a left-hander facing the right-hander, Seaver, who gave up two hits in a run in the first inning. Change, and it's low. And now, Sandy Koufax, Tom Seaver today. For the other two times we saw him, he was not that effective and seemed to be pressing and was wild high. Today, he hasn't been wild high. Tom is back with the fastball, swung and a miss, strike one. Jim Tom had a little problem in the first inning. It's hard to tell. Sometimes it takes a good pitcher time to settle down. I think Tom has had a history. I know Ralph will probably agree with that of having his troubles early in the ball game, and that possibly is a control thing. Change here, and Hendricks pops it up in front of home plate, and Ed Charles tracks it down and has it for the first out. That's right, Sandy, and like all great pitchers, he finds a way to pitch. Most of the time, he has a little trouble, and the history is that if you want to get to Tom Seaver, you better get him early. Johnson. One to nothing to score. Here is Dave Johnson. Hitting a 280. Fine year for Dave. Good defensive second baseman. Free for 13 against the Twins. Tom Seaver, a very fast worker. Ready to throw to the right-hander Johnson, who hits it straight away center field. A.G. started in, backed up, now starts in again, has the glasses down, and they're two down. So unlike the first inning, when Seaver gave up the home run, then struck out two men, and then a single to Powell before getting Brooks Robinson on a deep line at the center, Seaver's had easy going here with the six and seven batters, and here's Mark Belanger. Belanger, always noted for his glove, had a remarkable year with the bat this year, hitting at 287. Seaver ready to throw. Strike one. At the knee. Seaver, one of the quicker workers, is outside. I don't think he's quite as quick as Bob Gibson, Ralph, but Seaver sure throws in a hurry. Jim, nobody's as fast as Gibson when he wants to get that ball up to that plate. He really works fast. 1-1 pitch. Ground ball, chance for Ed Charles. Takes it on the short hop and throws on to first base, and the Orioles go down in order. 1-2-3, and at the end of two, Baltimore still leads it 1-0. Yeah! Thank you, Miss Nye, for leading us in song and frolic. Oh, thank you, Uncle Evan. Now, look, children, we're almost there for our first adventure at High Diddle Diddle Day School. Now, everybody make a happy hello face. <laughs> Let's not throw things. What kind of car is it? It's a station wagon. Who makes it? Plymouth makes it. What's this? That works the stereo in front and back. Monroe, jump up and down like that and your stomach will drop off. What's this for? That's the special air conditioner. It makes it cool in the back without freezing the front. Well, here we are. Send everybody out. No! We want to stay in the station wagon because it's comfortable. Yeah! yeah. What's this? That works the rear window with the optional washer. What was that thing on the roof? The air deflector. It keeps dirt and fumes away from the rear window. And this? The station wagon full of kids makes it. The sports suburban wagon makes it. Plymouth makes it. This is Ralph Geiner along with Jim Simpson from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. In the ball game, the Orioles have one run, two hits. They made no errors. The Mets have no runs, one hit. We're going to the top of the third. And once again, Jim. And Al Weiss will lead it off. And Ralph, in talking of Al Weiss, I had him down as a switch hitter until yesterday when you informed me otherwise. Al Weiss gave up switch hitting at the start of spring training, and he has been hitting for the right-hand side all year. He's had two home runs, one of them a very big home run against Chicago, the Cubs, winning the ball game. He came back the next day and had another home run, so his home runs were back-to-back games, and he has shown quite a bit of power for his size from the right-hand side. Weiss hit 215 on the year with two home runs, 23 RBIs, and many will remember that it was Al Weiss that Frank Robinson ran into and it put them both out and Robinson suffered from double vision for some time. That's when Al was in the American League. There's strike one. From Mike Cuellar, this one to nothing ball game, Baltimore leads and Sandy Koufax before you get away and after this next pitch, I want your opinions on 
Cuellar thus far. Back, and he's off the corner. It's one and one. Jim, I think Cuellar has thrown more screwballs than I usually have seen him throw. Uh, he hasn't thrown the curveball. He has, does not have any left-hand hitters in the lineup to throw it to. He throws two different screwballs. He throws a hard one, and he throws one that he takes quite a bit off, and it looks like a change of pace. And everything he throws, he's trying to keep outside, except for an occasional fastball inside. And in this kind of ballpark, where it's short down the lines and long in center field, well, that's the best way to do it. Here's a 2-1 pitch, and it's fouled back to the screen and just under us, and it's 2-2 to Al Weiss, the leadoff batter in the third inning of this 1-0 game, which Baltimore leads. Another game here tomorrow, which will start at a different time, an hour later than today, 2 o'clock Eastern time. Well, kind of, I'll be back. Cuellar is ready, and it's low to Al Weiss, and it's 3-2. and two. Cuellar went 3-2 and two on Tommy Agee, the first man up in the ball game, and then got him on a ground ball to... Brooks Robinson at third base. Hasn't had a full count since. Back with the 3-2, and it's high, and he's walked his first man. That's the second base runner for the Mets. The other, Cleon Jones, who singled back in the first inning. Monday is an off day, and then we switch to Shea Stadium, where the Mets fans are awaiting the return of their beloved Mets for the first World Series game in that stadium. Here is Tom Seaver. Hit 121 on the year and a pretty good hitter. 125, lost seven. Ten-game streak. All victories completed the season for Tom. Weiss at first base. Ken steal a base. And Seaver's trying to bunt. Bunts at foul. Throughout the year, Gil Hodges bunted in this spot quite often in the early part of the ball game to play for the tie. And normally, uh, it's not usually the book play. Incidentally, talking about nervousness and pitchers finding themselves, in the first inning, Cuellar threw 22 pitches, Seaver 20. In the second inning, Cuellar 11, Seaver 7. Another bunt fouled at the plate, and it's quickly two strikes to Seaver, who steps out and looks down to Eddie Yost at third base to see what the side is from Gil Hodges. Has it? Knocks the dirt off his shoes and steps back in. Weiss at first, with speed, none out. Mets trailing by a run. And Seaver the batter with two strikes on it. Cuellar throws over and just back in time is Al Weiss with a dive. And a pretty good pickoff move, Ralph. He had a great move to first base and Weiss was leaning towards second. And how he got back, I don't know. Seaver ready to bunt again, apparently. Brooks Robinson is running way in, and now they throw over to first again. I guarantee you, if Seaver should decide to swing that bat, he's liable to put the end of it right in Brooks Robinson's face. Brooks is way in, just, oh, 15 feet from Seaver in the batter's box. We are ready again. Brooks stays back, and he swings and misses this time and strikes out. That's the fourth strikeout for Cuellar. Weiss remains at first. Frequently, and Cuellar might have been doing it there. They'll try that pickoff play to see whether or not the batter he is going to bunt. Seaver was bunting all the way until the final strike when he swung and missed. Here's Tommy Agee. With Weiss at first and one down. Agee grounded the third in the first inning after working the count to 3-2. Hits the first pitch this time. Could be a double play. Belanger over to Johnson at second on the first base. Double play. And the Orioles are out. No runs, hit for errors. None left in the middle of the third. The Orioles won. The Mets, nothing. One morning, Wally Buckley discovered he had a case of the nubs. The nubs? The nubs. The tiny little part of his beard his razor couldn't get. They're all over my face. Fortunately, the Gillette Tecmatic razor gets rid of the nubs. Tecmatic adjusts to shave you closer. Tecmatic gave Wally the closest shave he ever had. No nicks, no cuts, no nubs. Boy, that was close. Tecmatic by Gillette. It gets the nubs. What man can resist the clean, crisp aroma of ocean surf? Get it? A new Gillette Foamy Surf Spray Shaving Cream. A new fragrance, like the refreshing spray of a breaker. The foamy crispness of ocean whitecaps. If you've ever enjoyed the refreshing scent of ocean spray on your skin, you know what to expect in new Foamy Surf Spray by Gillette. 
take the plunge today. We're coming at you from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. The Mets with Jerry Grody behind the plate. Don Clendenin at first base. Al Weiss at second. Bud Harrelson at shortstop. Ed Charles at third in the outfield. Leon Jones in left field. Tommy Agee in center. And Ron Swoboda in right. Now as we move along, the Orioles in front one nothing as they come up in the bottom half of the third. Here's Jim Simpson. And Mike Cuellar will lead it off, followed by the top of the batting order, Don Buford and Paul Blair. Cuellar gets a hand for the fine job he did in the top of the inning when he got out of trouble with the inning-ending double play. To one of the Mets' most dangerous batters, Tommy Agee. Tom Seaver, fast worker. The right-hander's ready and throws outside to Cuellar. Ball one. Seaver has given up two hits, including Buford's home run, the only run of the game, and has struck out two and walked nobody. Cuellar has struck out four, walked one, and given up one hit. Swings and misses this time, and it's one and one to Mike. 23 and 11 on the year, earn run average of 2.38. Hit 117 and did drive in five runs. Seaver back for the 1-1 pitch, and that's strike two as Cuellar takes another big cut. A sunny, sunny day in the low 70s in Baltimore. Seaver throws a breaking pitch that hits two or three feet in front of home plate and bounces back to the screen. And instead of being wild high, he's been throwing them in the dirt sometimes, Ralph. A lot of times, I think Sandy Koufax will back me up. That pitch is thrown down there in the dirt on purpose, and then you come back again and get it over. Isn't that right, Sandy? I think definitely, Ralph. Sometimes the pitcher will miss with a pitch just to come back. And he came back there, and Cuellar strikes out. Third strikeout, and here's Buford. The home run hitter. Hit a 1-0 pitch that just went over the 7-foot high tarp in right field, about 370 feet away. Travolta went back, fell against the tarp, and fell down. Switch hitter batting left-handed and takes low from Tom Seaver. Ball one. One run on two hits, no errors for the Birds. No runs, one hit, and no errors for the Mets. And a well-played ball game. Seaver's ready. Ground ball. Weiss comes over to his left on the grass. Now can't find the handle and drops the ball. Buford safe at first base. an error charge to Al White. That wasn't an easy chance. Al had to stay back in the ball as he moved back deep at the second base position and then he had to hurry up his throw and trying to transfer the ball against the fast runner Buford. He could not find possession of it to make the throw. Here is Paul Blair who was swinging hard in the first and struck out swinging. After Buford's home run, ball... Paul looked as though he was stepping in to get one himself. Now he comes up. The very speedy Don Buford, who stole 19 bases this year, is over at first base. But he was also caught 18 times. Breaking pitch high in the air, and I don't believe deep enough. Jones started back. Now it comes in. Straight away left field and has it for the second out. Tom Seaver right there got away with a high curveball, and Blair had a big swing at it, but couldn't find enough of the ball with his bat to hit the ball any distance at all. Seaver hasn't Frank got Adams. a... Pardon me, Jim. Seaver hasn't got a great move to first, but the catcher, Jerry Grody, has a great arm. Here's Robinson. They've been talking about speed. Baltimore has got a lot of speed, but perhaps only Brooks Robinson and Boog Powell accept it. Buford had quite a lead at first base, and Seaver drove him back with a throw to Clendenin. Two are out in the last of the third. Baltimore leading one to nothing, and on the air by Weiss at second. Buford is on at first base. Robinson, the batter, takes outside from Seaver. Ball one. Weiss is a fine glove man, and as Ralph Connor said, it was a difficult play for him. He had to keep backing, and as we said, wound up on the outfield grass. Robinson steps out, apparently has something in his eye. Waiting on deck is Big Boog Powell. Robinson now back in and ready, and Seaver is ready. With a sign from Grody. 1-0, outside, and low, 2-0. Buford was not going. 
Van Denen standing right on the bag, and Buford is five or six feet away. Seaver now, with two and zero, oh, comes inside and high, and Robinson went for it and fouled it back. Two and one. Frank Robinson probably is the strongest hitter at the plate as far as intimidation is concerned. He stands right on top of the plate. He has been hit a numerous amount of times, but you cannot move him back off. When you come inside to him, you have to come inside like Seaver did that time, right off the inside part of the plate, letter high. Good one. Robinson was hit 13 times this year, more than anybody else. Another check, and Buford just does get back again. Didn't have to dive for it. One to nothing to score. Orioles leading. And Seaver holding that second run on at first base. Frank Robinson has been hit 160 times in his major league career. That hurts. Two and one. Seaver now steps off. Seaver stared over and then stepped off. Robinson, it has been said, is the type of ball player that you will see smile after sliding in a second base with a double. But while he has a bat in his hand in the batter's box, it is all concentration for 500 or more times at bat a year. Two and one. There goes Buford. Swing. Charles at third base. Goes on to first. And has the easy out. And Seaver and the Mets are out of it. No runs. No hits. One error and one left. And at the end of three complete now, Baltimore leads New York. One to nothing. Second floor, refrigerators, formerly $195, now $215, going up. If you had a fire in your home today and had to replace everything, this is what you'd find when you went shopping. Third floor, living room sofas, formerly $210, now $225, going up. Basic things have gone up 5, 10, 20 percent. Then there's the cost of your house itself. This is why the Hartford invented Inflation Guard, the first homeowner's insurance policy that protects you against inflation automatically. To keep up with rising replacement costs, the Hartford boosts the value of your policy every three months. Sixth floor, Rod. New Inflation Guard. The way prices are always going up, can you afford to be without it? Insurance by the Hartford. We try to keep things simple. Memorial Stadium in Baltimore and the Mets trailing by a score of 1-0. The Orioles taking the lead in the bottom of the first inning on a home run by Don Buford. We're going to the top of the fourth, and here's Jim Simpson. All right, Ralph Garner. Bud Harrelson, who grounded the third and the first. Cleon Jones with a single, and Don Clendenin, who struck out the batters here in the fourth inning. The face, Mike Cuellar, who has given up just one hit, that Jones single in the first. Walked a man in the third, but he was erased when A.G. hit the first pitch and bounded into a double play. Harrelson made a zip to bunt. Draws his bat back, but the ball is over. Strike one. This is not only going to be a fun series because of the amazing Mets and the veteran Orioles, but also to see the superlative defensive plays I'm sure we will see. Ground ball to the man who can make him. Brooks Robinson takes a difficult hop and throws him out. Brooks Robinson over at third base, we started to say a little while ago, as a youngster in the World Series, he wants to see every game start right now. He doesn't want to wait till 1 o'clock. He's an anxious, I want to say youngster, but in baseball terms is not that young. 32 years old. Number 21, Cleon Jones. Here is Cleon Jones, who's single on a 1-2 pitch back in the first inning. Looking up Brooks, how many times he's won that golden glove? Nine straight times. Jones's ground ball single in the first on a one-two pitch. Pass Belanger, who was racing towards second. Takes inside from Cuellar, ball one. Cuellar, as Sandy Koufax said, has the screwball and two different speeds with it. Ready for the 1 0 pitch. Back again, strike at the knees. One of the most difficult things with the screwball is to hit the ball in the air, and Cuellar takes advantage of his great defense at third, short, and second with that screwball. He puts them to work, and they do the job. 
One to nothing, Baltimore. We are in the top of the fourth. The R is ready and throws, and this ball is hit to left field. Buford started in, and now camps under it and has it for the second out. They are mixing now, along with the screwballs, the curveball. Here's Don Clendenin, who struck out. We'll make the point again that Clendenin, Swoboda, and Charles, almost the very heart of the Mets lineup, as Gil Hodges' platoons, all right-handed, have not played in a couple of weeks, and all of them struck out in their first time at bat. We are off speed. This one is lined in the left field. Buford is over. It gets under his glove, rolls to the wall. Clendenin is on his way to second base and is in with a double. And so now the New York Mets have the tying run at second base with two out and Ron Swoboda, the hometown boy from Baltimore, the batter. Glenn Denon hit a curveball in left center field. He took something off the curve, and it was a curveball that Glenn Denon hit that put the Mets in front 3 nothing when they sensed the pennant against the St. Louis Cardinals. They are staring back at Glenn Denon. And now into his catcher, Ellie Hendricks. And ready with the pitch. Outside and low, ball one to Ron Svoboda. The Mets remember, and we said it before, against Atlanta when they swept the Braves in three straight in the divisional playoffs, scored 27 runs. The Orioles allowed only five in their three games with the Twins. Only four of those were earned. Now Cuellar is battling to keep the game from being tied. Drive to center field, not too deep. Blair is over, Robinson is coming over. Blair says he's got it and takes it for the third out. No runs on one hit, and Denham's double. No errors, and one left in the middle of the fourth. Baltimore won, and the New York Mets, nothing. <laughs> Waxing your car? Oh, yes. You keep it nice and clean outside. How about inside? Do you keep your engine that clean, too? Oh, well, should I? Well, engines do get dirty. I guess so. Uh-huh. The more you drive, the harder your engine works. And the harder your engine works, the dirtier it can get and the worse it runs. Oh, sounds reasonable. Uh, what's the solution? The anti-pollution team. Phillips 66 gasolines and Trop Arctic motor oils. Oh, real nice names. By fighting pollution in your engine, they help keep pollution out of the air. So you get a better running engine and we all get cleaner air. Mm-hmm. Think you'll get the anti-pollution team next time you drive? Oh, I don't drive. Wife does. The anti-pollution team. Only from Phillips 66. Well, take it from me. There isn't a better team in the country than Phillips 66 premium flight fuel and famous Prop Arctic motor oil. At Phillips 66, it's performance that counts. Last of the fourth inning in a one nothing ball game, the Orioles lead, and here comes Big Boo Cow. 304 hitter during the year, hit a 2 2 pitch and lined a single to right, and there's only other time at bat in this the World Series. To be followed by Brooks Robinson and Ellie Hendricks. On a perfect afternoon for the first game of the 1969 World Series, and we want to say hello again to all of the armed forces throughout the world who are listening to this broadcast today. Ralph Kahn and I will be here again tomorrow. And then the scene shifts on Tuesday to New York Shea Stadium. Cal is ready, and so is Tom Seaver. First pitch, curveball, and it's over strike one. At the moment, the Mets defense is playing Powell way around, as most defenses will, to pull to right. Change of pace, Powell checks swing, and quickly at shortstop is Harrelson who throws, and... Denon has to make quite a stretch to haul it in, and Powell is out. You know, Jim, Boog Powell hit a lot of home runs last year, 37, and one of them was inside the park in one of the smallest parks in baseball in Seattle. And I'd like to have been there when he did it. <laughs> Here's Brooks Robinson in the first inning with a run in on Buford's homer and Powell at first base. Brooks hit the first pitch to straightaway deep center field. A.G. hauled it in to retire Receiver ready. It's the first pitch this time, and Weiss backs up to the right side of the infield on the grass now and takes the pop-up for the second out. Jim Sandy Koufax leaned over and he said, I wouldn't have want to have been covering the plate when he came in home on that play at the plate <laughs> on the inside the park home run. 
Brooks' first ball hitting twice is out, and with two out in the fourth, here's Ellie Hendricks. And the top to Charles, Hendricks. almost in front of home plate last time up. Hendricks led the Mexican League a couple of years ago in home runs with more than 40. And playing different sports throughout his career has broken the same leg three times. And almost got hit there with an inside low fastball. Backs off ball one. Two out in the fourth. one nothing. the birds. Tom Seaver against Mike Cuellar. The matchup of those amazing Mets and those talent-laden Baltimore Orioles. Big, slow curve, but it's inside, and it's 2-0 to Ellie Hendricks. Seaver back with a fastball low and inside, and it's 3-0, and and it's the first time that Tom has been in this position. Hank Soar, the umpire behind the plate. Frank Sicori at first, Larry Knapp at second, Shaq Crawford at third. Drew DeMuro in left, and Lee Wire in right, and of course, three are from the American League, three from the National. And they'll switch the series. 3-0, and taking all the way, strike on the corner. Inside, it's 3-1 and to Ellie Hendricks. Seaver taking the sign from Grody. Is ready. 3-1 pitch. Hendricks is swinging. Line drive. Single to right field. And that's the third hit off Tom Seaver. And will bring up Dave Johnson. With two down. Johnson the batter. Davey. Flied to A.G. A very short center field. Hit the first pitch from Seaver back in the second inning. Now A.G. pulls over to the left. The Boda Moore towards center. For the right-handed hitting, Dave Johnson. Hendricks has speed. But you would not label him a stolen base threat. Off-speed pitch, low ball one. Got to bring up the fact, as long as Sandy Koufax is here, that the last man in the major leagues to ever get a base hit off Sandy Koufax was Dave Johnson. And he'll tell you every time. Want to know to Davey. Born in Orlando. Grew up in Texas in San Antonio. 2-0. and I bet he can do this. I bet he can tell you the count, what the pitch was, and where it was. And I bet you Sandy can, too. 2-0 to Johnson. With Hendricks on at first. Two out. Seaver, perhaps, and of course with a man on base, taking a little bit more time now. As the sign from Grody. Fastball is outside, and he has also gone to 3 0 on Johnson as he did to Hendricks. When Denon comes over, claps his hands, tells him to take his time. He went 3 0 to Hendricks. Alley took a call strike and then placed the next pitch into right field for a base hit. He's up to 3-0 to Johnson. And should he walk him, of course, Hendricks will march over to scoring position to second. 3-0 pitch, and he's got the strike on the outside corner. 3-1. The Baltimore fans, and this park holds more than 52,000, beginning to clap it up a little bit. The birds are in front by one, but there's a lot of time left. And this pitch misses outside, and he has walked his first man. Hendricks goes to second. That brings up Mark Belanger, who grounded to Charles at third back in the second. Had that fine year, we told you, hitting almost 290 at 287. And was four for 15 against the Twins in the playoffs. First time we've had two men on base for either team. Hendricks at second, Johnson at first with two outs. Seaver working now to Belanger, who takes a strike. The Orioles have three hits, the Mets have two. Seaver has struck out three and walked one. Cuellar has struck out four and walked one. Wind blowing now from left to right. Just the opposite of what it was about a half an hour ago. High pitch and a fake to first base, but Clendenin, of course, is not holding the runner. With Hendricks down at second. So it was only a fake, but it scared Davey Johnson for the moment. He hustled back. Two 
Drought and Seaver trying to get out of a jam. One and one. Base hit to right field. Hendricks comes around third base. Up with the ball is Sabota. Throwing toward home. To Grody. On to third base for the incoming runner there. Safe as Charles misses the tag. And nobody has got Belanger over at first base. When Dennett had come in to fake the cutoff. And it's two to nothing. Baltimore. Belanger drives in the run with Johnson now at third. And Belanger first with two out. Savona made a fine defensive play picking the ball up and he had plenty on his throw but it was up the line about 20 feet which took any chance away of Grody making the catch and the tag for the man to plate. If the throw had been on line they would have had him. The throw on to Charles at third base was slightly toward the foul line and of course the on charging Johnson was coming from second base and just simply got there before Charles could put it on him. Here's Mike Cuellar still two down two to nothing to score. The birds, they are struck out in the third inning. Seaver with men at the corners. First and third. Line drive. Goes over the head of Harrison. And Cuellar drives in the third line. Seaver, the second in this inning with a walk sandwiched in between, or the third in this inning, rather, with a walk sandwiched in between, and with two down, the six, seven, eight, and nine batters have gotten to Tom Seaver. Belanger's at second. Cuellar's on at first, hitting the first pitch to drive in the third run. And here is Don Buford. Seaver's first pitch, a curveball inside, ball one. Buford homered for the first Baltimore run in the first inning and reached on Weiss's error in the third. The Baltimore crowd alive. Here in the last of the fourth. Three nothing. The Orioles. Seaver ready. Throws a fastball. Line down the line. Overcomes Sobota. Hits a go up the wall. In comes Belanger to score. Down the second base goes Buford. The throw is there and he beats it for a double. The Crayar is stopping at third. It's four to nothing. The Orioles. down to the bullpen, which is beyond our line of view. Someone is up and throwing. It looks like Ron Taylor, the number one right-hand pitcher for the Mets, he's usually used later on in the ball game, and Ron is tossing in the bullpen. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. WGY Schenectady. The difference between the right word and the wrong word, it's been said, is like the difference between lightning and lightning bug which brings to mind the difference between Saratoga Vichy and its drab alternative, tap water. It's a choice between a unique, fascinating mixer or the same lackluster liquid with which one washes automobiles and oneself. Saratoga Vichy in that green bottle with the vivid yellow label. Jim Simpson back in Baltimore. There's a ground ball to Charles who throws on the first... And Seaver is out of trouble. The top of the four, three runs score on four hits. No errors and two men left. And now at the end of four complete, Baltimore four and the New York Mets nothing. They call me the lone dude. Last evening, I was at the burger shack waiting for Melinda to get off work. She could spot my 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner by the optional trap door air grabber on the hood. She was singing... Extra pickle for a nickel, onions on the bun. When all at once, some bad guys in a helicopter drop down and seize my little burger baby. Help me, help me, save me, save me. The dude in his 1970 Roadrunner, powered by the optional 440 V8 engine, follows the copter to a cave hideout. Extra pickle for a nickel, onions on the bun. My beloved Belinda. Quick, untie me. Get him, man. Hold it, hold it. 
Why don't you guys see yourselves for the first time in your lives and get a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner? Join the multitudes who drive Roadrunners and live their lives in peace as men. No. Please. Okay. okay. Bad guys don't make it. The Roadrunner makes it. Plymouth makes it. <laughs> This is Ralph Garner along with Jim Simpson from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. And the Orioles with a run in the first on a home run by Don Buford. And with three runs in the fourth inning on singles by Hendricks. Johnson got a walk, a single by Ballinger and Belanger, and then a single by Mike Cuellar coming up with three runs to take a 4 nothing lead as we go to the top of the fifth. Now as Cuellar completes his warm-up pitches, we go back to Jim. Ed Charles, Jerry Grody, and Earl Weiss in the top of the fifth inning of this four to nothing ball game, and how sudden it was, Ralph Connor, as Tom Seaver, a little shaky in the first inning, giving up the home run to Buford in a single to Powell, seemingly had settled down. Only one man had reached base, and that was Buford again on an air in the third, until two were out in the fourth, a single to walk. Two more singles, and Buford's double, and the Mets are in trouble, and this is the first game. Here is Charles, who struck out in the second, and the Mets and their fans will tell you that many times this season, New York would move into a city for a series, drop the first game, but come back to take the series. They did that several times against the Cubs, and I think that's one of the reasons why the Mets finally believed they were a great ball club. Cuellar's first pitch to Ed Charles is up high, fastball, and it's ball one. Mike now can... Perhaps pitch a little differently. He'll be bearing down all the way in this, the first 1969 World Series game, but he's got four big runs on the scoreboard. The Mets have yet to scratch. High foul out of play off to the right. And it's one and one to Ed Charles. Well, they talk about the great power of Baltimore. And when they talk about the great power of Baltimore, you speak of Buford, of course, but of Paul Blair, Frank Robinson, Boog Powell, and Brooks Robinson. And yes, it was Ellie Hendricks, Dave Johnson, Mark Belanger, and Mike Cuellar who sent Seaver Reilly outside from Cuellar, and it's 2-1 to Ed Charles. Buford, who was not with Baltimore in 1966, became the eighth player in World Series history to hit a home run in his first series at bat. And I'll give you a little quiz. Who was the last to do it? Believe it or not, that slugger, Mickey Lovich of Detroit. Brooks Robinson did it in 1966. Cardwell did it. Brooks Robinson backing on the ground ball of Charles and throws him out. Robinson really covers that third base. Jerry Grody, who grounded a shortstop in the second, the batter. Number 15. Four to nothing. The Orioles were in the top of the fifth. Back here tomorrow, one hour later, at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, game time. Our pregame show will start at 1.30 Eastern Time. We are ready to throw to Grody, hits the first pitch, pops it up. Johnson goes back, and now incoming from left field is Frank Robinson, who takes it for the second out. Now Weiss, who walked in the third as the batter, two down now in the fifth as Mike Cuellar has given up a single to Cleon Jones in the first. He walked Weiss in the third, and a double to Don Clendenin in the fourth, and that's it. Seaver has been wrapped for six hits, including a home run and a double by Don Buford. Cuellar, the first pitch is fouled on the line to Robinson, who picks it up and throws it on to Cuellar. And many of those base hits back in the fourth inning by Baltimore were on the first pitch from Tom Seaver. Ground ball. Robinson backing on this one. Difficult play at the knees. Gets the throw away quickly and he's out. What a play by Brooks Robinson at third. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. In the middle of the fifth, the Orioles lead it four to nothing. Nine, one, seven. 
You know, somewhere out there sits a poor soul that's never been spoiled. He shaves with an injector razor, and he still doesn't know Gillette makes the spoiler for him. For years, he's faced himself on mornings and wished he could get the most comfortable shave going with a blade that reduces pull to a fraction. In short, the one and only spoiler shave. But he thinks the spoiler's only for double-edged razors or misguided tub. They're available, my friend. Gillette Super Stainless Steel Injector Blades for your razor with the same miracle plastic coating baked on the edge as the spoiler. They come seven to a pack. Gillette Super Stainless Injector Blades for injector razors. Are you listening, friend? We move now to the last of the fifth inning. In the last of the fourth, the Orioles came up with three runs to go out in front by the score of four to nothing. And as we go to the last of the fifth, Frank Robinson, Boone Pell, and Brooks Robinson from the New York Mets and the National League, Ralph Carter. Thank you, Jim Simpson. And the first man up, a fellow who started in the National League, Frank Robinson. Frank in this ball game has struck out and grounded out the third, 0 for 2. And certainly one of the great hitters of all time. Stands right on top of the plate. He was struck out swinging at a fastball by Seaver in the first inning. And now Tom into the windup in the first pitch. Breaking ball high and outside in the count ball one. Seaver with a record of 25-7 and seven for the year. 24 years old. In his third year in baseball, he has won 57 ball games in three years. There's a high fly ball to deep left center field. A.G. back near the warning track. Under the ball, and he makes the catch. So Frank Robinson becomes the first out in the bottom half of the fifth. The Orioles lead by a score of 4-0. They got a run in the first and a home run by Don Buford. And then picked up three runs on four hits in the fourth. Now for the Orioles, Boog Powell, who has a single and two times up, stepping up. Boog, a left-hand batter, singled off a fastball in the right field his first time up. On a check swing, he grounded out the shortstop his second time up in the fourth. And Seaver's first pitch, a curveball, grounded foul. Ball off to the first base side, it's strike one. Powell with a 304 average for the year, 37 home runs, 121 runs batted in. Now Seaver into the windup, the one strike delivery. Slow change up curve outside, one ball and one strike. Seaver has given up four runs, six hits. He has struck out three and walked one. And at 1-1, the pitch to Powell, a fastball hit hard down to Weiss. He goes to one knee and takes a one-hopper, fields the ball cleanly, tosses off the first base for the out. Two up and two away, and Brooks Robinson now coming up. And Brooks has done quite a job with his glove in this ball game. Turned in a fine play on Bud Harrelson in the fourth, an outstanding play on Charles in the fifth, and a great play on Al Weiss in the fifth. Brooks batting right-handed is 0-for-2 in the game. And a fastball is swung on and fouled out of place. Strike one. Brooks flat out the deep center on a curveball in the first inning. Popped to second base in the fourth for his 0 for 2. 4 0 Orioles. Two men away, bottom half of the fifth. Seaver, a long reading of the signs, now takes one. Goes into the windup, and the pitch is lined toward the second baseman Weiss. He makes the catch. And the side retired in order. A 1 2 3 inning, and the score at the end of five. The Orioles four, the Mets nothing. When a company buys an expensive new piece of equipment to improve production, it can be buying an expensive new source of accidents, too. That's why it's always a good idea to bring in a man from the Hartford. The Hartford has over 200 loss control specialists on call at any time for any of its customers to help them set up control measures and programs for safe operation of machinery and daily activities. At the Hartford, we know it's possible to prevent most accidents before they happen because we have respect for the equipment and even more for the men behind it. Insurance by the Hartford. We try to keep things simple. 
Along with Ralph Connor, this is Jim Simpson at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium as we move now to the top of the sixth inning. In the last of the fifth inning, Tom Seaver, who gave up three runs, four hits, and a walk in the fourth inning, got out of it in one, two, three fashion, but Frank Robinson hit a ball deep to A.G. in center. Powell's ground out was a hard shot that Weiss took, and of course, Brooks Robinson lined to the second baseman. So Seaver did not have great stuff either in the last inning. And Tom is the scheduled batter to come up here in the sixth inning. And looking down, we have a change. Tom, Ralph Carter, apparently through for the day. Tom is out of the ball game. Duffy Dyer is going to pitch it for him, so Tom gets credit for a total of five innings of work. He has been charged with four runs. He gave up six hits. He struck out three and walked one. In the bullpen for the Mets, Don Cardwell warming up. So apparently he'll be the new pitch in the ball game when the Mets take the field for the bottom half of the sixth. Duffy Dyer, a catcher by trade, a right-hand batter. Has good power. He steps in now against Mike Cuellar. Mets have had only two base hits, a single by Cleon Jones in the first, a double by Don Clendenin in the fourth. And a ground ball in the first pitch out to Belanger. He picks it up, throws to first base in time for the out. So Cuellar, working easily, picks up an out on one pitch. That'll bring up the leadoff batter, Tommy Agee. Score 4 nothing in favor of the Orioles. They have four runs on six hits. Got a run in the first and three runs in the fourth. A.G. has grounded out his two times up. He grounded out to third in the first inning, hit into a double play at short in the third. And Cuellar, left-hander, with the first pitch, a curve, one of the few he's thrown, and it breaks in for a call strike. We are working mainly with the screwball and fastball. Pitching to a batting order that consists of nine right-hand batters. And the screwball back is outside. One ball, one strike. Agee in the overall season batted 271 with 26 home runs that led the club. 76 runs batted in that also led the club. Now at 1-1, the pitch by Cuellar outside. Two balls, one strike. have never lost a World Series game here as a Baltimore ball club. And a changeup that's looked at for a call strike two. They beat the Dodgers in 66, four straight ball games. Having shutouts in the last three and right here working on a shutout in their fifth World Series ball game. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch. Hit foul into the stands on the first base side. So the count remains at two and two on Tommy Agee. Mets have had only three base runners in the ballgame. Two singles and a walk. Cuellar pitching a very strong game. And the 2-2 pitch swung on again and fouled back out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Cuellar finished very strongly, as Jim Simpson pointed out earlier. He won 13 of his last 15 decisions. Now at 2-2 again, the pitch to Agee. And a curve is looked at. Strike three call. Strikeout number five for Mike Cuellar. Two men away in the top of the sixth. It brings up Bud Harrelson. But is 0 for 2. He has grounded out the third. His two times up. The last time, Brooks Robinson made a fine play and a very difficult chance. Mike Cuellar in the National League last year was bothered with a sore arm. He did not have the stuff he has shown here in this ball game today. First pitch is inside. It's ball one. This year, he has pitched five shutouts. Has an earned run average of 2.38 earned runs per game. A curve back, and it is outside. Two balls, no strikes. Cuellar did not relieve one time this year. He was in 39 ball games as a starter. Now 
And the 2-0 pitch to Bud Harrelson. It is low, ball three, and Cuellar behind three balls, no strikes. Cuellar has walked one batter. That was Al Weiss in the third, and he walked him on a 3-2 pitch. Orioles lead, 4-0. Two men away, top of the sixth inning. And the 3-0 pitch. It is in for call. No, pardon me. Same went up as the right hand went up, but it was the motion that would send Harrelson to first base. So the second walk. Harrelson on. It brings up the Mets' leading batter for the season, Cleon Jones. Cleon has one of the two hits off Cuellar in the ball game. A single to center field back in the first. Number 21, Cleon Jones. Cleon flied out the left field his second time up, so he's one for two in the ball game. Batted 340 for the season. Ralph, I'm looking at the pitching of Mike Cuellar, and of course we know him as a screwball pitcher, but he has not gone to it too much in this inning. He has changed his style, and he has switched from the screwball early in the ball game to the curveball, and now back to the fastball. First pitch to Cleon Jones. It is swung on and missed. Cleon with a big swing, not making contact. Cleon singled right through the middle this first time up. They're playing him as a slight pull hitter. Paul Blair playing that shallow center field. And again, Jim, it's unusual to look up and see a center fielder playing that shallow. Well, of course, Blair has a reputation of being able to go back and would rather go back on the ball than come in on it. Now at one strike, the pitch is hit in the air on the first base side in foul territory. A chance for Boog Powell. And he moves under the ball and makes the catch and it retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, a walk, a man left on, and the score at the end of five and a half innings. The Orioles four, the Mets nothing. Hey, just a little off the side, Tony. Okay. And uh, leave the burns, huh? Yeah, sure. Well, what are you doing with all your money these days, Jack? Come on, you kidding? Oh, no new car, nothing? Well, no, old one runs great. <laughs> Last time you were in the shop, you said your car was falling apart. Well, it was missing like crazy. So? Hey, uh, uh, easy on the sides, huh, Tony? Okay. So I got a can of STP down at the station. I put it right in the gas tank. Gas and be... tank? I thought STP's for the oil. Yeah, yeah, they got STP oil treatment. But this is different. STP gasoline treatment for the fuel system. Great stuff. Yeah, it must be to get that thing of yours running good. Really? Tell the difference right away. Smoothed it out like I was rolling downhill with the engine on. Now, come on. No, no, no kidding. Well, it must cost a fortune. What? Everything's got to be like a haircut, huh? STP gas treatment got my engine running fine for only 65 cents. STP gasoline treatment. You can feel the difference with the very first can. Ask Mario Andretti, Indy 500 winner. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. WGY Schenectady. Saratoga ginger ale is not Saratoga Vichy with ginger flavor added. We're not sure where that rumor got started, though we have our ideas. In any event, what Saratoga ginger ale is, is a quite unusual, delicious drink with its own identity altogether. It's gingery without being snappish, mellow without being gooey, altogether luscious. But then the Saratoga people do everything in good taste. From Baltimore, Jim Simpson with Ralph Connor in this 4-0 ball game as Don Cardwell has come on now to pitch for the New York Mets who lifted Tom Seaver for a pinch hitter. As Ralph said, Seaver worked five innings, gave up four earned runs, six hits, struck out three and walked one. Cardwell is coming on is 33 years old, born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and still lives in the Tar Heel State in Clemens. He's been around. He's pitched for the Phillies and the Cubs and the Pirates. And this is his third year with the New York Mets. On the year, he was in 30 ball games, won eight, lost ten, and his earned run average is 3.02. And it'll be up to the right-hander to hold the powerful Baltimore Orioles. And at the same time, the Mets need runs. They trail four to nothing, Ralph. Tough assignment for Don Cardwell and the Mets taking the field. And the first batter that Cardwell will be pitching to will be the catcher, Ellie Hendricks. Ellie got a rally going in the fourth inning that saw three run score after two member out when he singled the right field. Hendricks is one for two in the ball game. Left hand batter. Batted 244 for the year. Cardwell, a big, strong right hander. And the first pitch to the left hand batter, fastball high and away. It's ball one. 
receiver who had won 10 straight ball games in the regular season now has been taken out of the ball game. He won one game in the playoffs. Or as they say, championship series. Next pitch is outside ball two. Two balls, no strikes. It'll be Ellie Hendricks, Dave Johnson, and Mark Belanger for Don Cardwell here in the sixth inning. And a 2-0, the pitch rounded slowly out to first base. Clendenin takes the ball just in back of the bag, goes to the bag for the out, one away. Now to bring up Dave Johnson. Dave worked out a walk in the fourth inning when the Orioles scored three. To keep a rally going, he is 0-for-1 in this ball game. Fight out the center field for his one official time at bat. Johnson, a 280 batter for the season. Right-hand batter being played straight away by the Mets. 4 nothing Orioles. They have four runs on six hits. The Mets have no runs, two hits. We're in the bottom of the six with one away. Slider hit down to the third baseman, Ed Charles. And the glider picks the ball up, throws to first base for an easy out. Now Mark Belanger coming up. Mark single to right field. A drive in the second run of the ball game for the Orioles in the fourth inning. A big base hit. First time up, he grounded out the third. He batted 289 in the overall season. Right hand batter. That 289 represented a rise of 79 points in his batting average over last season. And the first pitcher called strike. Mark chokes up in the bat about three inches. Hits from a closed stance. Cardwell misses way outside and low. It's one and one. Sudden thought, Ralph. Uh, the bets are down four to nothing. It is not strange. Checking back, the Oriole pitching staff has 39 consecutive scoreless innings in World Series play. That's a lot of pitching. Pitch back to the right-hand batter, grounded over to Billy Hunter, the third base coach, in foul territory, and the count goes to one and two. One of the persons that would remember that very well, Sandy Koufax who is sitting up here. Sandy saw three of those consecutive shutouts pitched the last three games of that four-game sweep in 1966. Now at 1-2, Belanger pops one up in foul territory on the first base side. An easy chance for Cardwell to get to it. And he makes a catch, and the side is retired. An order by Don Cardwell in his first half inning of work. And the score in the middle of... At the end of the sixth inning, the Orioles for the Mets nothing. If you want a car that makes it that makes it It's the flash of lights, the photograph When you take it It's the new affair that's starting now Look out, small economy cars here comes Duster. It's the greatest new adventure you can find. It's a state of mind. Big enough for even big people. Small enough to fit into about three quarters of a parking space. Valiant Duster. With an engine big enough for good pickup and safe passing, but small enough to save on gas. Valiant Duster. Plymouth makes it. Baltimore leads it four to nothing, but the day is not over yet. But if we will be permitted, we'll look ahead a little bit. Tomorrow, one hour later, at two o'clock Eastern time, the second game of the World Series, and a couple of left-handers, Jerry Kuzman of the Mets, and there are those who say that on certain days, Mr. Kuzman is one of the best pitchers around anywhere, anytime. And Dave McNally, a left-hander who won 20, will go for Baltimore. And it was Sandy Koufax's opinion when he and I were doing the game in the playoffs that McNally last Sunday pitched perhaps one of the strongest games he had seen in three or four years. So there are the matchups for tomorrow. Day off on Monday, then we go on to New York and Shea Stadium on Tuesday. Now here's Ralph. Okay, Jim, and the first batter will be Don Clendenin for the Mets. Don had a double his last time up off. Mike Cuellar, who has given up only two hits. And the first pitch is low, ball one. Don hit a curveball in the left center field for a double. 
his first base hit in this World Series. First time up, he struck out on the 2-2 curveball. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Swung on and missed a screwball in the count 1-1. One one. Mike Cuellar, a 23-game winner. 32 years of age, working against the Mets in the first game of this series. Best four out of seven. Orioles lead 4-0. They have six base hits. And then in the right-hand batter, and he fouls the next pitch into the stands, and the count moves along the 1-2. and two. After Clendon and the Mets will have Ron Svoboda and Ed Charles coming up. Jim Simpson pointed out earlier, the Mets have their fourth, fifth, and sixth batters in this lineup for the first time in about two weeks of play. Next pitch is hit foul again back into the stands, and the count stays at one and two. Mets have not seen much left-hand pitching. And as a starting pitcher, the last left-hander to start against the Mets was Steve Carlton. That was back on September 24th when the Mets won the Eastern Division of the National League against the St. Louis Cardinals, winning 6-0. Now a pitch inside in the count 2-2. Two and two. They did face a left-hander, George Stone, in the playoffs with Atlanta in relief. But manager Gil Hodges did not shift his platoon system players into the ball game with that change. Now a swing and a foul into the stands. A count, two balls, two strikes. Mike Cuellar. Looking for the signs. His catcher, Ellie Hendricks. Outfield shallow, straight away, and the pitch. Hit hard to center field. Another base hit for Don Clendenin. and he is now two for three. Ball fielded by Paul Blair, and Don is on at first base as he leads off here in the top of the seventh inning. And that'll bring up Ron Svoboda. Mets with a third base hit. Ron Svoboda coming up is 0 for 2. Orioles lead 4-0. No one out top of the seventh. Ron makes his home here in Baltimore, right-hand batter. And Cuellar from the set position, and the first pitch is high. Fastball missing, ball one. Ron batted 235 in the overall season with nine home runs and 52 runs batted in. He was struck out on three pitches his first time up. Next time up, he fought out to center field. The 1-0 pitch. Outside, ball two. So as we move to the latter stages of this ball game, the Mets looking for runs. And the anticipation is, can Mike Cuellar continue to hold on and pitch his strong ball game? He had 18 complete games in the regular season. Five of them were shutouts. Here's the pitch. High ball three. Three balls, no strikes. And Hendricks walks the ball back toward the mound. On deck batter for the Mets is Ed Charles. Well, Jim, I know you saw a lot of the Oriole ball games this last year and working for NBC on the game of the week, and this ball club certainly is an impressive ball club as you look at the players that stand out there in that field here today. Well, like all good ball clubs, uh, Ralph, it's no surprise. Back in March down in Florida and throughout the Southwest, everybody was saying, what's the best-looking ball club you've seen? And most folks at Baltimore, they won 109, and here they are in control at least of this, the first World Series game. And a mighty important game to win. Best four out of seven. Now the 3-0 pitch, a call strike. This time is back in. Three balls, one strike. And in at first base. Cuellar sets the pitch. Outside, ball four. And now the Mets, for the first time in the ball game, have two men on. On the walks, Robota gets first base. And then it moves down to second and brings up Ed Charles. Charles is 0 for 2 in the ball game. He was out in a fine play by Brooks Robinson his last time up. He struck out his first. Now some stirring in the bullpen for the Orioles. We are right on top of this ball game. No one out, though, in the top of the seventh, and the Mets threatening. 
And the first pitch to Charles. A fastball high and inside. Ball one. And Hendricks now going back out to the mound, walking slowly. Eddie Watt out there throwing now as Davey Johnson comes in route to slow down Mike Cuellar. And Watt is quickly warming up as George Bamberger, the pitching coach, has gone out to talk also with Mike Cuellar. Well, you just can't point out the tremendous pressure that these players are playing under with literally millions of people watching, listening. Bamberger makes a short speech and then returns back toward the dugout. Hendricks, the catcher, walks back to give out the signs. The count, one ball, no strikes. The batter, Ed Charles. The Mets trailing by four. They have runners at first and second base. No one out top of the seventh inning. And Ralph Ron Taylor's up and throwing again for the Mets. Mets getting down toward the bottom of their batting order, getting set to use a pitch hitter if they have to. Now a pop-up on the next pitch out the shallow right. Might be trouble. Coming over is Frank Robinson. He gets to it and makes the catch. All caught just inside the foul line in fair territory. A long run for Robinson. Shaded over toward right center field against the right-hand batter. So the Orioles pick up an out. One away in the top of the seventh. It brings up the catcher for the Mets, Jerry Grody. Jerry 0 for 2 in the game. Last two months of the season for the Mets, he batted over 300. He has a season record of 252 for the year. Grody, a right-hand batter, being played very shallow in right field by Frank Robinson. Shallow in center by Paul Brer. And fairly deep in left by Don Buford. Infield set up for a double play. And the first pitch to Grody is taken inside and high. A fastball for a ball. Orioles have turned in one double play in this ball game. That was against Tommy Agee's ground ball to the shortstop. Now Cuellar sets, checks at second. And the pitch. Fastball high, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. For the first time, Cuellar is working under pressure. Under more pressure than just a World Series ball game. Mets trying to get back in it. They trail by four. And at 2-0. The pitch to Jerry Grody. Hit hard by the shortstop in the left field of base hit. From then in rounds and is held up at third. The throw in is taken by Robinson in the cutoff position. The Mets have the bases loaded and the tying run coming to the plate. Hard smash by Jerry Grody beyond Belanger's diving try in the left field. The ball hit hard. And with the Mets trailing by four, the third base coach, Eddie Yost, playing safety first, holding up Don Clendenin. Now I'll Weiss the batter. Weiss. Ralph, we put it up before, and maybe it'll hold up for number 40, but going into this inning, the Oriole pitching staff, dating back to the 66 series, 39 scoreless innings, but the Mets have loaded them up with one down. So the Mets threatening strongly now. One man away in the seventh, the batter Al Weiss. Al is 0 for 1. He also has walked. And Cuellar into the windup and the pitch. Swung on him is strike one. Don Clendon and started the inning off with a single to center field. Ron Swoboda walked to put runners at first and second. Ed Charles flied out to right. But then Jerry Grody with a hard single to left. Got the bases loaded. And Cuellar into the windup. The one strike pitch. Outside for a ball. It's one and one. One ball, one strike. Mets now in the ball game have four base hits. And the pitch back is taken low in the dirt. It's two balls and one strike. The on deck batter, the pitcher, but Cardwell, I'm sure, will not bat. Mets will have to go to their bench as they trail in the ball game four nothing. The Orioles four runs, six hits, no errors. The Mets, no runs, four hits, one error. And the 2-1 pitch. Inside, it's ball three. Three balls, one strike. Hardwell is 
is in the on-deck circle. Ron Taylor throwing in the bullpen for the Mets. Here's the 3-1 pitch. It is over for a call strike, and Al Weiss was taking all away. So it's out, three and two, with one away in the seventh. Tension mounting here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, and the three-two pitch to Weiss. It is hit to left field. Buford hanging there will catch it. He makes the catch. And then it has tagged up a third. He comes in from third to score the first run of the series for the New York Mets. And a field play put on a third. It is denied by the third base umpire, Shag Crawford. And the Mets have reached the scoreboard for the first time in World Series history. So it's now a four to one ball game. Swoboda held at second base. Behind him, Grody at first. And that scoreless streak of 39 innings now broken by the Mets. 39 consecutive scoreless innings by. Baltimore pitchers in World Series play has just been broken. Now coming to the on-deck circle, Rod Gasper. Rod batting for the pitcher, Don Cardwell, and he represents the time run. Rod is a switch hitter. He'll be batting from the right-hand side against the left-hander, Mike Cuellar. Rod batted 228 in the overall season. He had one home run and 14 runs batted in. He is used mainly as a defensive ball player, a fine defensive outfielder, and now pinch hitting and playing in his first World Series ball game from Long Beach, California. Rod Gasper. He spells his name G A S P A R. Pronounces it as it were spelled E R. And the first pitch outside a ball. Gaspar with a peculiar stance, and if you go back to Archie Vaughn of the Pittsburgh Pirates, you might be able to get a vision of how he stands at the plate. He has an open stance, swings back into the play as the pitch is made. Now Cuellar working with runners at first and second and two away, and the pitch taken over for a call strike. strike. That's where the rally started. They need three more to tie. Two away in the top of the seventh inning. And Cuellar, a left-hander, back to the plate. And he gets a screwball over the outside corner. It's called strike two. So the count now against the hitter, one ball and two strikes. On deck batter for the Mets, Tommy H. He represents the power in the ball club. Casper steps out of the batter's box, takes a few practice swings, now gets back in. And Guayar now set to go. And the one-two pitch. Rounded slowly out the third. Could be a base hit. Robinson charging, picks it up with his bare hand. In time for the out. A great play by Brooks Robinson. In the inning, one run on two hits. No errors and two men left in the score. In the middle of the seventh, the Orioles for the Mets one. Leave a little on the field with some baseball greats, finding out what kind of people use which kind of right guard. First, Ricky Llewellyn, who uses right guard antiperspirant. Rick, tell us about your great groundskeeping team. Well, our primary role is protecting the infield from rain and precipitation. How? By covering it with a top baller. And I'm proud that our crew broke the record for covering an infield with a tarp. Twenty seconds in a raging downpour. Congratulations. Well, they had a lot of desire in spring training. They worked hard. And we're able to put it all together this year. About right guard, Rick. See, wetness is my mortal enemy. That's why I employ right guard antiperspirant. It helps keep me dry and stops odor so they don't offend the guys. Like uh, Tex here, the best little far line painter in the majors. Thanks, Rick. I'm a right guard regular man. It tops the league in odor protection. One shot of right guard regular keeps me fresh all day, letting me concentrate on foul lines so straight I often get applause. Two kinds of people, two kinds of right guard. Wally, meet Chuck from the top crew. He's had a great year despite being hobbled by a muscle pull. Along with Ralph Connor, this is Jim Simpson back in Baltimore, where the score is 4-1, to one, the Birds. 
Baltimore scored first in the first inning when Don Duke for the leadoff batter hit a home run off Tom Seaver since departed. With two out in the fourth inning, Hendricks singled, Johnson walked, Belanger singled in another run, Cuellar singled in a run, and Buford doubled in another to score three. And that made it four to nothing, and that's the way it stayed until the last inning when the leadoff batter, Clint Denon, singled to center field on a 2-2 pitch. Savota walked with Clint Denon going on to second. Charles fly to short right. Brody singled to load the bases, and Al Weiss's sacrifice fly scored the only run of the ball game. Cardwell, batted for by Rav Gasper in that inning, has since departed, and Ron Taylor has come on. Taylor, 9-4, and four, with 13 saves, 2.72. And I couldn't help but think the story, Ralph, that you and the rest of the Mets broadcasters talk about when you talk about Rod Gaspar, as you used to call him, as mid-season before he came to one of you, I guess Lindsay Nelson said, my name is Gaspar. He said, why didn't you tell me in the spring? He said, I didn't think I'd stick. And here he is in the World Series. And that's been the story of the New York Mets as they have put together their greatest season. Right here, though, they trail by a score of 4-1 to one to the powerful Baltimore Orioles. And the first batter for Ron Taylor as he steps into the pitcher's box is pitcher Mike Cuellar. Mike helped his own cause back in the fourth inning with a base hit to drive in a run. It was the third run of the ball game for the Orioles. In the season, Cuellar batted 124, has a lifetime average of 124, and the first pitch is in for a call strike as Taylor comes in with a slider. Ron, born in Canada, lives in Toronto, Ontario, 31 years of age. He is the only Met with World Series experience. And the one-strike pitch, a slider inside, ball one, one and one. Ron has played for Cleveland, St. Louis, Houston, and now the Mets. Got his World Series experience for the St. Louis Cardinals. He has not given up a base hit in World Series play. 1-1 pitch, hit hard foul by the first base coach, George Stoller. Ron was in 59 ball games in 1969. He had a record of 9-4, and four, an earned run average of 2.72. He was in two games in the 1964 World Series. Way our left hand batter, one for two in the ball game. Taylor back, and the pitch is way inside off the glove of Jerry Grody. Two balls, two strikes. The Orioles four, the Mets one. The Orioles have six base hits, the Mets have four. We're in the bottom half of the seventh inning. In World Series play, the National League has won 26 times, the American League 40. And at 2 2, the pitch. High and away, ball three. A full count to Mike Cuellar. The on-deck batter is Don Buford, who has had two hits and three times up. Taylor has the signs and the 3-2 delivery. It is swung on and fouled back into the stands, and the count remains at three balls and two strikes. Orioles winning 109 games, just two short of the American League record of 111, won by the Cleveland Indians in 1954. 3-2 pitch, swung on and missed, and Taylor gets a strikeout. As Cuellar goes back, Ralph, it is an encouraging word for the Baltimore Orioles fans and a discouraging word for the New York Met fans in that Mike has finished 18 ball games this year. And he's riding along despite a little bit of trouble in the top half of the inning. Now the batter will be Don Buford. His home run put the Orioles on the scoreboard in the first. He came on the second pitch of the ball game off Tom Seaver. And later on he doubled the right field for his second base hit. He also reached an error by Al Weiss. So he has been on three times and three times up. And the switch hitter batting left-hander takes the first pitch outside ball one. Tom Seaver went to the University of Southern California and played for Rod Dado there, the baseball coach who has done such great work. Don Buford also came from USC. And there's a high fly ball hit to right center field. Ron Svoboda over, also Tommy Agee. Agee's making the call, and he makes the catch. Two men away. That'll bring up Paul Blair. Blair, a former New York Met. He was drafted out of the organization by Baltimore. 
Struck out his first time up. Right out the left field his second time up and grounded out on the good play by Ed Charles, the third baseman, his third time up. Paul Blair played with many of the Mets that are on the field here today in the Mets minor league organization. First pitch by Taylor, a breaking ball outside is ball one. Taylor, primarily a slider curveball pitcher. He'll sneak the fastball in tight, usually try to waste it, make you go for the low outside breaking pitch. Now at 1-0, the pitch back to Blair, low and away. It's 2-0. Orioles lead 4-1. to Two men out, bottom half of the seventh inning. And at 2-0, Blair takes over the outside corner, a call strike. Two balls, one strike. Hank Soar, the home plate umpire. Frank Sikori, the umpire at first base. Larry Knapp, the umpire at second. Shag Crawford at third. Down the lines, Lee Wire in right. Lee DeMuro in left. Six umpires in this ball game. 2-1 pitch. It is a breaking ball outside. So, Ron Taylor with a 3-1 count working to... Paul Blair, the center fielder. Taylor checks the signs now into the windup. And the pitch is swung on and missed. Blair trying to go for the big one. Not making contact. In the season, he had 26 home runs. Batted 284. Now Taylor checking out the 3-2 sign. And the pitch is low, and it's ball four. And Paul Blair, who led the club in stolen bases in the 1969 season with 20, is on at first base with two men away. And the batter coming up, Frank Robinson. Number 20, Frank Robinson. Frank is 0 for 3 in this ball game. He led the club in hitting with a 3.08 average. Had 32 home runs, 100 RBIs for the year. Robinson right on top of the plate. A strong, strong right-hand batter. And now, Taylor working from the set position for the first time. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled into the stands at strike one. Frank Robinson started his major league career with the Cincinnati Reds. He hit 10 home runs in April for an all-time American League high for that month. And he has 450 career home runs in 12 seasons. Now Taylor working from the set position. Checking out the run at first. He breaks. Taylor steps off the pitching mound and has Blair hung up between first and second base. Clendenin takes the throw, tosses off to Al Weiss, who then makes the tag of Blair, and the side is retired. If you're scoring, it goes one, three, four. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base, and the score at the end of seven, the Orioles four, the Mets one. It's do Yankee doo-doo. Yankee doo-doo. One, two. Down. Riding on a pony, stuck a feather in it, and called it macaroni. What did he call it? Macaroni! <laughs> After a child has been in a bad accident, how can an insurance company help him to laugh again? The Hartford knows that money alone can't do it, but people can. Doctors, specialists, therapists when they're needed to treat the injuries, to soothe the shock. And getting them there fast can also help. <laughs> at the Hartford, we know it's often the kind of help you bring in at the start that determines whether or not there'll be a happy ending. Insurance by the Hartford. We try to keep things simple. Along with Ralph Connor, this is Jim Simpson back at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium under sunny skies, the temperature in the low 70s, and the New York Mets 
trailing four to one as we move to the top of the eighth. But the Mets have the top of their batting order and Tommy Agee, Bud Harrelson, and Cleon Jones against Mike Cuellar, the winningest left-hander in the major leagues this year with 23, and a man who led the Baltimore staff in complete games with 18, and he's been very strong thus far over the first seven innings, giving up four hits, striking out five, walking three, and giving up just one run. Okay, Jim, we're moving now to the very important part of the ball game for the New York Mets, their last two innings. And the first batter will be their leadoff man, Tommy Agee. Tommy is 0 for 3 in the game. He has hit the ball hard twice. Ran it out the third his first time. Hit into a double play in the third his second time up. He struck out, got caught looking at a curveball in the sixth. So Tommy 0 for 3 to lead off for the Mets here in the eighth inning. And the first pitch is looked at for a call strike. Mets will have Tommy Agee, Bud Harrelson, and Cleon Jones as their first three here in the eighth against the starting pitcher, Mike Coyar. And the left-hander back. The one-strike pitch, a curve, hit down the right field line. The ball curving away and into the stands, a foul ball. Ball was fouled by about 20 feet. And I doubt very much if it would have been out of the ballpark if it had been fair. 309 down each line, 380 in the alleys and 4-10 in center. So A.G. back to the plate. The count of two strikes. They are ready to go. He's eager to pitch. And now the wind-up and the pitch. And the pitch is swung on and missed. And Cuellar with a fastball strikes out Tommy A.G. That is his sixth strikeout in the ballgame. That'll bring up Bud Harrelson. Bud is 0 for 3. Two in the game with a walk to go along. Bud batting right-handed against the left-hand pitcher. Cuellar with the screwball, curveball, and fastball. Pitching a strong ball game. Orioles lead 4-1 to in the first pitch of fastball. Swung on, strike one. And as we pointed out earlier, or actually Jim Simpson pointed out, Cuellar has changed his pitching pattern throughout this ball game. That's right, uh, Ralph, and we now have the attendance figures under capacity, 50,429, but only a few not in seats in the upper right field deck and in dead center field where there's some temporary bleachers. 50,429 looking on. Now Cuellar back to the plate and missing inside. It's one and one. The Orioles in the regular season drew over a million people. The Mets drew over two million. 1-1 1-1 pitch is high and away, and it's two balls, one strike. The Mets led the major leagues in attendance with 2,175,373 paid admissions. I don't know how many other people that got in free, Jim. <laughs> now a swing and a foul back out of play, and the cat goes to 2-2. Two and two. And don't forget this series after tomorrow, game time will be at 2 o'clock, moves on to be in Shea Stadium on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tomorrow's pitchers scheduled to be Dave McNally, a 20-7 and performer for the Orioles, and Jerry Kuzman, a 17-7 and performer. Make it 17-9 and performer for the Mets. Now a ground ball foul, the count stays at 2-2. Two and two. Tuesday's pitchers are to be Gary Gentry, if everything goes according to form. Gary, a rookie in the major leagues, won 13 and lost 12. Jim Palmer, hard-throwing Oriole pitcher with a 16 and 4 record, scheduled for the Orioles. Now pitch outside and low, a screwball missing, and the count full for Bud Harrelson. One man away, top of the eighth, the Mets trailing by three. On deck batter, Cleon Jones. And the pitch hit hard in the hole. It'll be a base hit in the left field. Harrelson makes a turn at first base. Ball fielded by Buford. And the Mets have their fifth base hit in the ball game. And it brings up Cleon Jones, who has a base hit and three times up. That base hit by Harrelson, his first in World Series play. Cleon singled his first time up in the center field, but was left at first base. He also has flight out the left and fouled out the first. Number 21. Leon batting 340 for the season. He was third in the National League batting race, won by Pete Rose. In between was Roberto Comeni. Four to one, Orioles. Mets. 
needing three to tie. One man away, top of the eighth inning. They were behind from the very second pitch of Buford home run and the second pitch of the ball game off Tom Seaver. Got the Orioles in front, one nothing. Now a fastball in for a called strike. Baltimore then got three runs in the fourth with two men out. Getting three runs on four hits. Since then, they have been held in check. One strike count on Cleon Jones. Way our sets, checks it first. Here's the pitch. It is swung on and grounded foul. Strike two. Leon Jones, in the course of the regular season, had 12 home runs. Drove in 75 runs. He missed just about the last 20 days of the season with a pulled muscle in the rib cage. Harrelson, a safe lead at first, or apparently safe lead. Coach there by Yogi Berra. Now Cuellar with a two-strike count. Back to Jones. The pitch is hit hard at the second baseman. Johnson, he knocks the ball down, throws to the shortstop covering that second base for the force play there. And the throw on the first base was not close. So a good play by Dave Johnson, the second baseman, and a hard smash. It got to him on the short hop. He smothered the ball, picked it up, and then threw to the second base where... Langer was covering for the force play. That brings up Don Clendenin, who has had two hits and three times up. Don has doubled and singled and has scored the only run for the Mets. It came in the seventh. And the first pitch is low a ball. Clendenin, a right-hand batter. 16 home runs in the regular season, batted 248. Orioles lead 4-1. to one. Way are working. Jones at first. Here's the pitch. It has hit foul down the right field side, and the count now one and one. It has been a beautiful day here in Baltimore. Right now, for the first time, shadows extending between home plate and the pitcher's mound from the light standards. Little tough on the hitters. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Swung on and fouled back against the screen. And Cuellar getting a fastball about letter high by Clendenin and down with a hard swing. Clendenin got the big, big hit for the Mets that since the Eastern Division against the Cardinals when he had a three-run home run in the first inning against Steve Carlton. The Mets won that ball game on September 24th, 6-0. Now a pitch just outside, just off the plate. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Pitchers always say when something like that happens, how could he take a pitch that close? Sometimes because you're fooled. Now Cuellar sets again. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Swung on and missed. Great screwball by Cuellar and Clendenin is struck out. No runs, one hit. No errors. A man left at first in the score. In the middle of the eighth inning, the Orioles for the Mets one. I condemn the dusty trail. Hear the moo coyotes wail. I'd walk a mile for a camel. I'd walk a mile, wouldn't you? I got a wandering soul. Beat up boots with a great big hoe. I'd walk a mile for a camel. This message was strictly for smokers who never tasted a Camel cigarette. Camel smokers, you know what we mean. You other guys, start walking. Oh, what are those tiny whiskers there? The nubs! The nubs! Those miserable little specks of hair. The nubs! The nubs! Gillette Techmatic has news for you. The nubs are doomed. The nubs are through. You'll shave so close. Now Techmatic gets the nubs. The Gillette Techmatic razor adjusts to shave you closer. You almost never get nicked, but you always get the nubs. Techmatic gets the nubs. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. 
W.G.Y. Schenectady. The difference between the right word and the wrong word, it's been said, is like the difference between lightning and lightning bug. Which brings to mind the difference between Saratoga Vichy and its drab alternative, tap water. It's a choice between a unique, fascinating mixer or the same lackluster liquid with which one washes automobiles and oneself. Saratoga Vichy in that green bottle with the vivid yellow label. Along with Ralph Carter, this is Jim Simpson back in Baltimore. The last of the eighth, Frank Robinson, Blue Pal, and Brooks Robinson in this four to one ball game. Baltimore winning. And a statistic, because baseball is built on statistics, Ralph. The team that has won the first World Series game previously has won 39 series and lost 26. Pretty impressive numbers when you start to think about it. And another thing, the Mets have never, ever won a first game in anything they've ever done. And the first pitch is over the outside corner. It is strike one. Batter, Frank Robinson. The Mets have never won an opening game. They have never won the first game of any important series like a World Series. So maybe it's true to form. One strike pitch to Frank Robinson. And Taylor back, and the pitch is just off the plate. It's one and one. And a possible exception, Atlanta. They did win the first one there. The that would play. be the only exception. You caught me. I just wanted to see if you were alert. <laughs> I'm here. One ball, one strike. And the first pitch back there after the 1-1 one, one count over the outside corner. And it's now 1-2. and two. Frank Robinson. 0 for 3 in this game. Batting against Ron Taylor for the first time. Ron came in in the seventh inning. Has not given up a base hit. And the one-two pitch. Just off the plate, a slider missing. Two balls, two strikes. Orioles have four runs on six hits. They got a run in the first and a home run by Buford. Picked up three runs on four hits in the fourth. And took a four-nothing ball game to the seventh when the Mets got their only run. Now a swing and a foul into the stands. So the count remains at two and two. In the seventh inning, Clendenin singled to center field. Ron Swoboda walked to put Clendenin down at second. Ed Charles spied out to right. Runners holding. Grody singled hard to left to load up the bases. And then Al Weiss on a 3-2 count hit a sacrifice fly to left field. And the Mets got their first run in World Series play. Two balls, two strikes. Taylor back and a pitch drilled foul deep down the left field line. Robinson way out in front. They count... Remaining at three and two. Behind Frank Robinson, Boog Powell, and Brooks Robinson. Taylor's first three here in the eighth inning. Now the signs are out and the pitch. Swung on and missed, and Frank Robinson has struck out. Taylor picking his second strikeout up. Robinson striking out for the second time in the game, and that'll bring up Boog Powell, who has a single and three times up. Number 26. Looking ahead to pitching, Ralph, and of course, tomorrow it is Kuzman and McNally, and we assume on Tuesday in New York it'll be Palmer and the rookie Gary Gentry. Baltimore, if successful in this series, could go through it without even using a 14-game starter by the name of Tom Phoebus. Now Boog Powell, the batter. Boog singled to right field his first time up. Takes a vicious swing and misses strike one. Now with 37 home runs in the regular season. Well, when you talk about Baltimore, you talk about Frank Robinson, Boog Powell, the fielding of Brooks Robinson, speed and fine hitting of Paul Blair, and also Don Buford. But they have strong, strong pitching. Sort of the story of the old powerful Yankee ball clubs. Here's the one strike pitch. And it's in for a call, strike two. Remember Gil Hodges yesterday, when asked about platooning and playing the right-handed hitters, he said, listen, what happens on that dirt spot out there, meaning the pitcher's mound, is going to be the story of the series. And thus far, he's gone with his best, Tom Seaver, and trails four to one. Now the two strikes. Pitch to Boog Powell. It's grounded out to the first baseman, Don Clendenin. He grabs the ball near the foul line, trots to the bag for the out. 
Now with two men away, Brooks Robinson comes up. He is 0 for 3 in the game, but he has turned a sparkling job with his glove at third. Brooks is 0 for 3. He flied out to center, popped up to second, lined out to second in this three trip. What a job he has done at third base. He has handled some difficult chances, the hard chances, tricky hops and whatever. And the first pitch by Taylor outside a breaking ball, ball one. If you want to look ahead to the ninth inning, as the Mets trail four to one and come up in the ninth, they'll be sending up Ron Swoboda, Ed Charles, and Jerry Grody as their players in the lineup. 1-0 pitch over the outside corner, one and one. One ball, one strike. And a swing and a miss. Robinson going for an outside curveball. Brooks has 196 career home runs. That's the all-time high for third baseman in the American League. He's had 1,931 hits in his major league career. One-two pitch. Outside, a breaking ball again, two balls, two strikes. The Orioles four, the Mets one. Two men out, bottom of the eighth inning. First game of the best of four out of seven in this 1969 World Series. Now a 2-2, the pitch by Taylor. Swung on and missed, strike three. And Ron Taylor in two innings, striking out three, giving up no hit. A 1 2 3 heading in the score at the end of eight. The Orioles four, the Mets one. Seventy Chryslers with new torsion quiet ride are here. Well, we go to the top of the ninth inning, and this is Jim Simpson with Ralph Connor in Baltimore. This, the first World Series game of 1969. Those amazing Mets who came on from being nine and a half down in August to Chicago to win their division, and then go on to the league championships and sweep the Braves in three straight. Right now are three runs down to the Baltimore Orioles with three outs remaining. Ron Svoboda, Ed Charles, and Jerry Grody, as Ralph Connor told you, the listed hitters. And for those amazing Mets, they'll need something amazing against Mike Cuellar, the winningest left-hander in the major leagues this year with 23. He's completed 18 ball games and hopes to complete this, his first World Series assignment. Well... Okay, Jim, and the confidence set up by the Orioles. No one warming up in the bullpen at this point as Mike Cuellar will start off against Ron Swoboda. Ron is 0-4-2 in the game, and the first pitch is low for a ball. It'll be Ron Swoboda, Ed Charles, and Jerry Grody as the Mets try to get back in. They trail by three. Cuellar into the windup, and the 1-0 pitch, a call strike. It's 1-1. One one. Swoboda struck out his first time up, flied out the center his second, walked in the seventh inning. Right-hand batter being played as a pull hitter, and the 1-1 pitch, a hard swing and a miss. One and two. Cuellar has struck out seven in the ball game. He has walked three. He has given up five base hits. And the next pitch is outside. Screwball missing. Two balls, two strikes. Way our lifetime against the New York Mets. 
From his National League days, five wins and five losses. Last year against the Mets, he won none, lost two. Here ahead in a very important game, and a ground ball hit back to the mound. Knocked down by Cuellar. He cannot pick it up, and Sloboda is safe at first. That ball looked like it might go through. Cuellar knocked it down, went over, had a chance to pick it up and get his man at first base, but he could not find the handle, and Swoboda is on. It is Bean scored a base hit, and that brings up Ed Charles. Ed Charles. Chalk that one up to anxiety. Well, no doubt about it. Too anxious to make the play. Just in too much of a hurry to get that big out here in the ninth. Ed Charles, a batter. Ed has no hits and three times up. He was robbed of a base hit by Brooks Robinson back in the fifth. Right hand batter and the pitch. Charles takes, trying to get on. It's in for a call strike. Boog Powell, the first baseman, playing deep behind the runner at first. The Orioles not figuring the runner to be running with the Mets trailing by three. Now Cuellar sets. And the pitch. And a fly ball hit the center field. Easing back under the ball. Paul Blair. And he makes the catch. From Boda halfway down the line, back to first. There is bullpen action now going for the Baltimore Oil. And for the Mets, Jerry Grody coming up. Jerry had a base hit in the seventh inning. He's been up three times. His base hit loaded up the bases and set it up for Al Weiss to drive in the Met run that came in the seventh. Orioles lead four to one. And the first pitch to the right-hand batter, high and away a ball. Orioles got a run in the first on Buford's home run. And they picked up three runs in the fourth inning on four hits. Now Cuellar back, and the pitch is in for a call strike, and Grody taking. The man on, Ralph, the Orioles have gone to the bullpen, and left-hander Pete Rickard, former National Leaguer, is throwing along with Eddie Watt, who was throwing a couple of innings ago. So the Orioles have their bullpen ready for protection. Now, Brody full with a screwball and going forward outside and swinging and missing. It's one and two. Where with that good screwball, he's had a fine fastball. Has not used the curve too much, but has used it. Used it mainly to set up his other pitches. One ball, two strikes. One man out, top of the ninth. The Mets trailing by three. And the pitch. And it is over the outside corner. Strike three call. Brody struck out with a screwball. He did not like the call. That'll bring up Al Weiss with two men out in the bot top of the ninth inning. So the Mets are down to their last out. As Al Weiss steps up, he has driven in the only run for the Mets. He came in a sacrifice fly in the seventh inning with the bases loaded. Al is 0 for 1 officially in the game and was robbed of a base hit. That was strikeout number eight for Mike Cuellar. And the first pitch is looked at. It's inside a ball. In the on-deck circle for the Mets, Art Shamsky, a left-hand batter. Now Cuellar sets. Here's the pitch. And Weiss looking again, trying to work out a walk to get on base to bring up the time run. And it's low for ball two. And now Hendricks walks out to the mound to talk to his battery mate, Mike Cuellar, who won 23 ball games this year. Mike won 13 of his last 15 decisions in the regular season's play. Two men away. Top of the ninth inning, the Mets need three to tie. Four to go ahead. Now the signs are out. And the 2-0 pitch. And it's low, ball three. And again, Al Weiss taking. And they count three balls, no strikes. If Weiss can get on, it will bring the tying run to the plate. Now Cuellar sets. The 3-0 delivery. Outside ball, four. And Weiss walks. Mabota down to second. And Art Shamsky will be pinch hitting for the pitcher, Ron Taylor. Shamsky in the season batted 300. And we're going to have some time called here now. And a conference will be taking place at the mound. 
George Bamberger, the pitching coach, walking out to the mound. He has been out before. And this ball game with one out to go. Being slowed down as the Orioles try to work out some strategy. And we'll repeat again, Ralph, in the World Series is in the playoff games. The coaches or the managers can come out and talk to their pitchers as many times as they deem necessary. So Bamberger can simply walk out there and talk to Quay Young. But after all, it is an infield hit. More disturbing, perhaps, is the walk to Al Weiss, not known as a big hitter, hitting at 215 on the year and on four pitches. And the man that was benched because a left-hander, Cuellar, was to start today's game as the man on whom the Mets pin their hopes right now, left-hander Art Chansky. One of the reasons that manager Gil Hodges likes to platoon is to have a strong bench, and Art Chamsky, who had 14 home runs and 47 runs batted in, in 100 games is now the batter. He had a great year for the Mets, and the first pitch is swung on and missed. Strike one. They are going to the curveball for the first strike. Ron Swoboda is at second base. Al Weiss is at first base. Cuellar sets. Working quickly. And the one strike pitch. Hit hard down to the second baseman, Dave Johnson. He has the ball to throw to first base. And the Orioles have won the first game of this 1969 season. The final score of the first game of the World Series is 4-1. to We'll be back with a recap of today's ball game in just a minute. Have you heard about the latest Gillette invention? It's an aerosol shave cream called the Hot One. It actually heats up right under your very nose. No kidding. You don't have to hold the can under hot water or plug it in or do anything like it. Because the Hot One gets hot all by itself, right out of the can. And the fact is, hot shave cream softens whiskers quicker than cold shave cream to give you a faster, more comfortable shave. So why shave with a cold one? And you can shave with the hot one. The self-heating shave cream from Gillette. Some men have average-sized hands. Some men have big hands. For men with average hands, Gillette introduces our new adjustable razor with an average size handle. For men with big hands, Gillette introduces our new adjustable razor with a long handle. Both new razors have nine precision settings. Gillette figures a more comfortable razor in your hand means a more comfortable shave. Along with Ralph Connor, this is Jim Simpson in Baltimore. The first game of the 1969 World Series is over. The Orioles have won it by the score of 4-1. to one. And going back to 1966, that means they've been to the World Series post five times and have won them all. Baltimore scored first in the first inning. When on a 1-0 pitch, Don Buford hit a home run over the right field fence. They did not score again until the fourth, and it came with dramatic suddenness. Boog Powell grounded out. Brooks Robinson popped up. But then, Ellie Hendricks singled a right. Davey Johnson drew a walk. Belanger singled a drive and a run. Mike Cuellar, the winning pitcher who finished 18 ball games during the regular season and finished today, singled a center to drive in a second run. And Don Buford, who had quite a day today, doubled to right to drive in a third run to make it four to nothing. The Oriole pitching staff by that time had gone 39 innings without giving up a run going back to the 1966 series. But they gave up one in the seventh inning. Don Clendenin got his second hit of the day, sandwiched between two strikeouts. He singled a center. Ron Sabota walked. He went on down to second base. Ed Charles had his short fly to right caught by Frank Robinson. But then Jerry Grody singled hard to left field so hard that Buford, and of course the Mets were down by four at this time, was able to hold the runner on at third, and so was Eddie Yost, the coach, holding him there. Al Weiss hit a long drive to left field, and that scored Clendenin with the only run for the New York Mets. And so the final score, four runs, six hits, no errors for Baltimore, Cuellar the winner. One run, six hits, and one error for the Mets, with Tom Seaver, the 25-game winner, the loser. And we'll continue with our recap of today's game right after this message. Second floor refrigerators, formerly $195, now $215 going up. If you had a fire in your home today and had to replace everything, this is what you'd find when you went shopping. Third floor living room sofas, formerly $210, now $225 going up. 
basic things have gone up 5, 10, 20 percent. Then there's the cost of your house itself. This is why the Hartford invented Inflation Guard, the first homeowner's insurance policy that protects you against inflation automatically. To keep up with rising replacement costs, the Hartford boosts the value of your policy every three months. Sixth floor, rug. New Inflation Guard. The way prices are always going up, can you afford to be without it? Insurance by the Hartford. We try to keep things simple. Well, Ralph Connor, they say about the Baltimore Orioles, they have good hitting, they had it today. They have strong pitching, they had that today. But they also say about the New York Mets, for whom you broadcast, these kids bounce back. They certainly do, and the one point of the season that comes to my mind was when they lost three straight to the Pittsburgh Pirates near the end of the year. And they put in Jerry Kuzman in the first game of a doubleheader after losing those first three ball games of a five-game series, and Jerry won the ball game. And it turned the Mets around. They never lost another game until they cinched the overall Eastern Division of the National League. Jerry Kuzman has won some big ball games with the Mets to get them righted. And he'll be the pitcher in the ball game tomorrow. Jerry, with a strong fastball, has a lot of weight in his shoulders. He's pitched two years in the major leagues. And uh, he is capable of pitching a ball game that can defeat any ball club in baseball. He'll have to because the Orioles have a big advantage as they have won the first game of this four out of seven series. 39 times the team has won the first game, has gone on to win the series. 26 times it has happened the other way. So it's going to be a big job for the Mets and Jerry Kuzman. I would say this, he's capable of it. He has that kind of stuff. He'll have a tough man on the mound against him and Dave McNally. All right, Ralph, and we'll be back with a final run on on today's ball game right after this message. <laughs> Country soft, country fresh. That's the taste you get with Super King Size Salem 2. Try America's favorite menthol taste, made longer. You can take Salem out of the country, but you can't take the country out of Salem. You can take Salem out of the country, but... that the second game of the 1969 World Series will take place again here in Baltimore tomorrow, but will start on Sunday, one hour later. So our broadcast time for a pregame show will be at 1.30 Eastern Daylight Time. And Ralph...